Even the fierce defenders of the Wood Elf Kingdom cannot safeguard their realm from the disorder of the Great Vortex. In the forests of Nagaroth, a portal to the Dreaming Wood grows thin. Where beyond, demons of age. The forest grants Queen Ariel a dread vision of ancient trees blackened and broken, of countless wood elves slain upon their twisted boughs. For should chaos breach from their realm, the world roots will carry the demons to the very heart of Athel Lauren. Only Ariel herself can seal the dire portal. So sends her most trusted to cleanse the forest ahead of her arrival, unaware that a vengeful enemy watches. The Twilight Twins, Nistra and Arahan, a deadly fusion of Dawn's serenity and Dusk's fury. They will not waver in their perilous quest. The Mage Queen, vulnerable for the first time in eons, but her hidden foe dare not strike directly. A terrified Skaven is persuaded to lure their twisted overlord to this cause. Shrot, master mutator of Clan Mulder. How he yearns to be free of his unnatural, undying hunger. Ariel's pulp remains would be a certain remedy. A queen's implacable guardians oppose a creature of chilling madness. A brutal war is unavoidable. The fate of the forest, undecided. Back from the crabs. Now I'm going to find out which one of y'all going to toss my salad. Welcome to Throt the Unclean's Mortal Empires campaign. I'm not going to lie. I have played very little of it. I played a ton of Nystra and Arhan over on the other side of the DLC. But I didn't really feel like competing with Legend today. So I, <laughs> I switched up what I was going to do. Unfortunately, that means that... You're not looking at a Skaven Mastermind here. They're actually one of my least played campaigns in all of Mortal Empires and the Great Vortex as well. I've never done an Eshin campaign. I've never done an Ekiklaw campaign. But uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. I have, uh, obviously I have a basic idea of how Throt the Unclean plays and what his mechanics are. And we will cover all of that in detail. But uh, in terms of like opening strats and all that, I've only played a handful of turns. So I don't really know what the game plan is, but that might make it more entertaining because, I mean, we're going to find out stuff together, right? And if I fail and I screw up horribly, then you can laugh at me and we'll have a good time with it. How's that sound? Welcome, welcome. Hope you guys can hear me. Uh, please confirm, by the way, if you can hear my voice, that would be really good. Because we have had a few issues in the past where that did not work out. But we've got plenty of time to stream today, and as long as my nausea and my heartburn is kept at bay, which it has been because I've been popping Pepto-Bismol and Pepsid and everything out the ass, we should be good to go. Is there going to be a replay of the stream? Yes. As always, every single time when I do a stream, it will be uploaded as soon as it is available and public. Soon after, so. This is not a head-to-head. -head. I do not even believe we can do head-to-heads this early. Usually with the campaign embargoes, it's just playing solo. Ick it claw. I know, I'm sorry, I pissed you off, bro. My bad. Okay, so just a basic overview of what we're doing with Clan Boulder. This is obviously in Hell Pit. This is the ninth circle of hell. It's Dante's Inferno of the Warhammer world. This is your start location. We are right on the border of Kislev, east of the Empire northeast of the Empire, and also right on the border of Norska and the Chaos Waste. Which means when the Chaos Invasion comes knocking, and they will, they're gonna be spawning in right here. That's potentially a problem. Thankfully, it's only turn seven. We don't really have to worry about that too much. What we do have to worry about is Krakadrak and the Norse Dwarfs, who are directly to our north. So, the game plan is to blitz them, finish them off quickly, hopefully, and not be at war with 
Throg the Troll King and the other factions of Norska because they will march over and they will take our settlements if we're at war and we have not signed a non-aggression pact. <laughs> we're smart though, very smart Skavens. So we decided, hey, you know what? How about we not be at war with them? And we have non-aggression pacts with both the Varg tribe, that's Sertha Ek. He can come in with a War Mammoth, which would be hugely problematic in the early game. And Wintertooth is also signed an NAP with us. So don't have to worry about them for now. It means we can focus on the Norse Dwarfs. And your starting units for Throughout the Unclean are pretty solid. So Mutant Rat Ogre is a new one. It's a magical attack, single entity Rat Ogre with 445 weapon strength and a lot of AP. That's good and bad. Magical attacks means we cannot bypass the magic resistance of the dwarfs. So this guy will actually be dealing less damage to them than we would otherwise like. Do have normal rat ogres. Wolf rats are going to be the backline hunters, running down quarrelers, thunderers, rangers, those kind of things. And we have storm vermin and a pack master in our brood as well. Now, you guys have seen pack masters in multiplayer, but you haven't seen them in campaign. They're actually a lot cooler in campaign. Basically, the devs said, you know what, if we decide to give them a million summons in multiplayer, they're going to be even more toxic. So they actually get a lot of summons in campaign that they don't in multiplayer. Tide of Pox gives us Wolf Wrath of Poison. You can summon two of those. Actually, no, one of those at the start. And then when you level it up, you get two. Then you can get two more with Tide of Death, which gives you the armor piercing variant of them. These are the Warpstone Teeth. They have magical attacks as well, but worse base stats. Get him a Brood Horror, get him a ton of Casualty Replenishment and Leadership for all your monsters. And basically, we are going to be monster mashing with Clan Molder. That's what they do. We need your opinion if Throt is packing. Uh, I mean, he's got a third arm. You know what that means, right? Like, yeah, he's packing heat for sure, my dude. Not even a problem. So what we're going to do in Kazid Board Karag is get this thing up to level 2, which we have. We're going to finish up getting some clan rats with shields as our front line. And then we're going to move on towards the Norse Dwarfs and move on Krakadrak. Now, there's no guarantee that fight will be easy. I might have to do some shenanigans to make sure we pull them out onto the open plane because I don't want to go through a siege battle with them. But while we end turn here and wait for a couple things to happen, I'll show you the unique building in Hell Pit, which I believe is the Nine Circles of Hell. And I can also show you his unique campaign mechanics, what we'll be building yeah, towards. I have kind of hinted at it already, but Throt the Unclean gets really good monsters really early. So this is the Rat Ogre's Cluster. It's the growth vat, essentially. You passively generate a bunch of growth juice as you play. There are other ways to do it. You can play battles. This will build it up even faster, so we'll be playing plenty of those. But this will go up to, I think, level five. And when you get up to level five, actually, if we took it to like the Flesh Lab, should be able to show it here, yeah. So, starts out with unleashing a bunch of wolf rats. Not a big deal, but it gives you a bunch of mutagen when you unleash the growth vat, and you can use that for some other things, like augmenting your units. Then we get Rat Ogre's Cluster, that's the second tier. A Brood Horror Cluster, which is probably when we're gonna pop it, because they are gonna be super useful versus Dawi. And then after that, we get Mutant Rat Ogre Cluster and the Help It Abomination Cluster. So, as this growth vat accumulates growth juice, you can unleash bigger and better monsters. You can get multiple of them in the same turn and it gets pretty smexual. So I think by like turn 15 or so, you can be unleashing like tier five monsters with Throt. Now there's limits to that, of course, and we'll show some of those off, but pretty cool stuff. Now, if you want to augment your units themselves, there's a lot of ways to do it. So for the infantry, we could click on any of these like our storm vermin and give them, I don't know, something like frenzy. That's actually not too bad. We might do that. Giving them immune to psychology, giving them more melee attack, charge bonus, all that sounds pretty effing good. I think we'll actually do that because that'll make it, that'll make them a lot more efficient against dwarfs. So we'll give them the more testosterone. <laughs> Skaven born in the clan wars possess genomes that give them elevated levels of aggression, the code for which Throt has expertly replicated. And now they have frenzy. We can continue to give them a bunch of traits. But the downside is that as we get up to the like level four, level five, they're getting crazy bonuses, but they're also getting crazy detriments. So for example, casualty replenishment, minus 100%. Unit effectively becomes useless at that point. Okay, so that's probably not something we want to do. Once we get up here and you get a bunch of those malices going, they will actually turn into loaded corpses that you can run into melee and explode and they will be dead forever. 
but it's kind of funny. So basically, the more traits you put on something, the more unstable they become, the more zombie-like they become, the more summon-like they become. So you can also do the same thing for your monsters. So if I wanted to give these guys uh, melee attack and weapon strength, I don't know. That sounds pretty good. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because we might need this for other stuff. But that's the basic idea of the Flesh Lab. So I think we're going to level up our Packmaster here and then move on the Norse Dwarfs and get some battles going, huh? How's that sound? Boom cookies, please? Well, that's just weird. So no, probably not. Been rocking milk and cookies for like five years. I think rebranding at this point would be hard, and I'm not sure I want to. Uh, let's go. You know what? I think melee defense is going to be a really big thing here. Because when you, we get him on a Brood Horror, which will only be at rank 14, having that high melee defense, which we already saw Throt has, would be pretty impactful. So, Public Order is good here. Help it has stabilized. We're going to level that up to level 3. And then move you guys over to Sojok Traken and get some fighting going. Ooh, so they are already ready for me. They got some grudge throwers and stuff. This is actually good for me, though. That means we're not having to deal with the garrison. Actually, you know what? They do have walls. Okay. Interesting. No, they don't have walls yet. They just have the garrison building. Walls would be at level three. So, drop the uncleans. Skill tree. I don't think you guys would have seen this yet. Welcome, we got 2,000 people on screen. Welcome, 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 my friends. Welcome. All right, so throughout the Unclean, he's got some really good units and abilities, obviously. I mean, campaign movement range, exactly what you want. Melee attack from the Whip of Domination. Creature Killer gives bonus for large in an area of effect, along with immune to psychology. So one of the big issues the Skaven have, of course, low leadership. They tear around a lot. This kind of, if you're blobbing with Molder monsters, this will help tremendously. Uh, and then his unique skill tree is remoldered. You saw this yesterday. Invocation of the Hack for Monsters. Incredibly good. 24 melee attack, 1400 HP, right off the bat. So then we got Growth Juice. That'll help us get more of the monsters out quicker. More bonus for storage, more AP. Casualty Replenishment, obviously always incredibly good. And then Perfect Vigor is pretty big deal, especially now. Um, you get massive malices in combat when you are tired, when you are exhausted. Then we got some weapon strength, melee defense, missile resist. We, sh we covered all that stuff. And this means we get a second Rat Ogre summon. So I think, yeah, straight from the word go, Beast Pack is available. It means we can summon Rat Ogres straight from turn one. That is also going to be incredibly good versus Dali. So we're one turn away from attacking the Norse Dwarfs here. They're going to have plenty of units on the field, but I'm not super worried about that kind of combat. We'll be entering here. So. Let's jump right in. Next turn, fight a battle, and hopefully end this war with the Norse Corps quick. After that, I think it'll be up to you guys where we go. How does he remolder from 100 meters? Like I said, he's packing, so he uses it like a prehensile tool and just like Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein's it up from really far away with his third arm. It's what all the ladies love. Hunger. All right, so we got Ulthar, Stonebeard, and Thorgard Cromson. There's a Grudge Thrower and a couple other annoying units, but let's attack the units that are out on the open plain and uh, fight one, shall we? So, unfortunately, Throt is kind of not very useless, useful in the early game. Like, he's got AP, which is nice, but the bonus for Sarge won't help at all. Um, this is not a very good army to start with. But with Storm Vermin with Frenzy and some Mutant Rat Ogres and Rat Ogre Summons and all that, I think we'll be okay. What are the new technologies? Uh, we can cover that right now. All right, so we're going to get an ambush here. Do I want to ambush is the real question. I think so. It's probably a good idea. Maybe get an extra summon. Oh, never mind. Yeah, this is definitely the play. So we can basically just isolate this army by itself. Don't have to worry about the uh, secondary army coming in because it's an ambush. Well, that works out perfectly for me. What does Throt smell like? He smells like hard-boiled eggs that have been sitting in the rotten sun for a good five days. Would be my guess. Show my feet. <sighs> my feet are not in great shape right now, guys. My, my body is crumbling. I'm, I'm 28 years old, but I feel... Like, I'm some undead zombie summoned by Neferata at this point. 
gotten heartburn for the first time, had it for 11 days straight. Went to the doctor yesterday, got the HPV vaccine, got uh, the flu shot, got tetanus shot. But my body is, is falling apart. My shoulders are sore from where they shot me, and they shot me good and hard. Everything is going wrong. But thankfully, we've had some uh, amazing views and viewership over the last couple of days, so that has been super fun, and I'm glad you guys have been enjoying all the content. There will be plenty more on the way, especially when the full embargoes drop. All right, so you guys might not have actually seen this unit yet. That's a mutant rat ogre right there. Look at that thick boy. That's badass. It kind of reminds me of a Yeti, which we'll be getting in Warhammer 3 with the Ogre Kingdoms. Yetis are an actual unit in Total War Warhammer. That should be a lot of fun. But yeah, he's kind of got that snow monster, abominable snowman aesthetic going on right now. Okay, so the way we want to do this, I think, is have two shield rats on this side, two clan rats. No, you know what? No. I'm going to keep all of it close to my leadership, just because otherwise we're going to mass route. Keep you guys together. Keep them in like a kind of big compact formation. Storm Vermin can be first into the breach. Tie down some of the dwarf warriors. Slingers can move out to the flank here. And these guys are already augmented, so... <laughs> this is actually hilarious. Apparently it's randomized, because this is the second campaign I've started with Throt. They had a different ability the first time. These guys can summon Warp Lightning. Take a look at them. So because they have an augment from the Flesh Lab, they can literally call down Warp Lightning from above. That's pretty badass. We'll try to form a blob here and use that to its fullest potential. That sounds pretty fun. But they do have a degen aura, which means they'll lose health right from the word go. As for the rest of this army, keep it all together, and then just kind of move in and mow them down, I think. Let's do it! So we're just gonna tie them up immediately, push in, get you guys around the flank, move you out here, and then you guys can come in from behind. Do we know about when Warhammer 3 is coming out? Yes, actually, it got announced yesterday with the uh, mobile announcement that, not Tencent, but some other... Chinese company is working on for Warhammer that yes indeed uh Warhammer 3 is coming out in 2021 so we don't have a date on that obviously but we have we now have confirmation it is coming next year ah uh, okay I thought it was a castable ability which would have been pretty crazy it's on a location wherever they're standing at the moment it's good to know we'll try that again <laughs> that behind them Sir Pancelot with the 1,000 rubles. Hey, Andy, finally catching you on stream. Hope your health improves. All the best. Wishes from cold Russia. Thank you, my friend. Yes, it is indeed cold in Russia. I have never been there. I would like to be. I've heard good things about Russian girls and about all the locations, St. Petersburg and all that, Moscow. I would like to go someday. Thank you for the donation, my friend. Much appreciated. Fortune does indeed favor the infamous. We're going to charge in from behind. Maybe do a little bit more psycho charging with the scurvy dogs. I did notice there were banners, but I didn't see them in the gameplay itself. I'd have to rewatch the trailer again. But it, it seems like something CA might want to work on for Warhammer 3. That's definitely a possibility. Right, we're going to keep our rat ogres out of combat now, just because they're taking an absurd amount of damage. We don't need them at this point. All right, here we go. We're going to do it. Let's drag through into the big dwarf blob and then cast it. Forty nine hundred HP. Oh, yes. Feels good, man. Pull them out now. Give me twelve fine rat men and I'll impregnate the bitch.
We're doing good. Not losing anything important. Well, that was easy enough. So, pack masters by default have running with the pack. Restores 4 HP per second to monsters. Which won't be too beneficial for us right now, but... Still good to have. And I have not confirmed yet if that stacks. Let's see, actually. We can, yeah, we should be able to check that out. Let's bring the uh, pack master over and see if that will stack with other regen. Because if it has the exact same regeneration trait, it will not stack. Double fast forward here and check this out. Okay. So I'm going to give them some regen. Oh, it's, it's if they're in melee. That's the problem. Yeah, I won't be able to test that yet. All right, cool. Yeah, so there there are going to be banners in the tra there are banners in the trailer. I didn't I don't remember if there were banners in the actual gameplay itself. But it does sound like something they could work on for Warhammer 3, and it's something that I think we would all enjoy. What faction do I want to play first? That's it'll we'll have to see what the campaign mechanics are. I can't answer that yet. And who the lords are too. I think we might have gotten another donation as well, so let me check real quick. Oh, we're good. Yeah, I, I actually heard that Warhammer 3 is going to be Clan Rictus. It'll be Clan Verminkin. It'll be just all the other clans we don't have yet. So that'll be fun. <coughs> How do other Wood Elf Lords unlock Ariel? I'm not sure the answer to that, to be honest. I've not really played that far into a campaign with any of the other Wood Elf Lords. I think we'll take the money right now. Rat Ogres are super hype. Stop it. Milk my man tits. That is a name and a half. <laughs> with the 5A? Good day, thick boy. Glad I could catch a stream at this ungodly hour of 1.30 a.m. Greetings from down under, mate. Yeah, I was gonna say, where are you? If it's 1 a.m. already. Have to be Oz or New Zealand. Welcome to the stream, my friend. Alright, so for Thrap the Unclean, there are multiple things we could do here. But I feel like getting that ambush chance up and working towards Draftmaster, and then the end of the blue skill tree is probably pretty good. Red skill tree might be a little bit early to be working on right now. I don't think we'll work on the melee stuff. And then when Remoldered opens up, that's where we'll go down the uh, unique skill line for him. So. We can either go income from looting or we could go for ambush success chance. Both of those are decent. Uh, let's go for ambush right now. Just because our starting armies are kind of weak. We want to make sure we get as many left sided engagements as we can. So we'll go two in that, no, and then, uh, final. Not shame my clan. Yeah, this should not be a problem. <sighs> At last, flesh meat. <laughs> Where's the unique UI in the middle top? Vortex map only? Uh, we'll have to go check that out once we're back into the uh, campaign map, but I'll see. There is There are probably a few things that are a bit different between Vortex and Mortal Empires. I personally like Mortal Empires because we're in the right location for the map, right? Like, Hellpit is Clan Mulder's stronghold. It's their home base. It's their citadel. Don't want to be playing somewhere else. Okay, so this one will be maybe a little bit more tricky. Shield Rats definitely in the front ranks. That's important. Use them to absorb the Corridor Fire. Nine rats behind. We'll use these guys out on the flank again. And we will make sure that all four of these guys stay right next to each other and just bust down. Maybe just goon out the Lord right away and get their leadership low. These guys can Vanguard deploy, so we will make sure they are used in the rear to hunt down grudge throwers. So there are two variants, and it looks like both have the Warpstone teeth. So yeah, in tabletop, they could be equipped with Poison. They're pox rats, essentially, and then the other one is warpstone teeth that have magical attacks and more AP, but worse base stats overall. 
talk about Thrott Lore. Well, he's the master of Clan Mulder. He's second in command only to, I believe, what is the, is it Verminkin? My, I think it's Clan Lord Verminkin. So essentially, as is the case with every single legendary Lord for the Skaven and Warhammer 2, the Lord we get is not the Lord of Decay that sits on the Council of 13. It's their first underling. It's their first officer, essentially. So Skrulk is the first officer of Clan Pestilence. He's not the top daddy, but he's close. He's under Nurglich. Grot is under Verminkin. Uh, Moors, or Queek Headtaker, is under Morskitter. I believe. And a bunch of others. And then obviously Deathmaster Snickich is under Nightlord Sneak. But yeah, I mean, his gameplay and his campaign style is exactly what you'd expect. It's all about monster mashing. It's why you start with Rat Ogres. It's why you start with the Mutant Rat Ogre. It's why by turn 10 or so, we should have Brood Horrors. Which are 95 speed and pretty bananas, my dudes. Yeah, Screech Vermin King is a different character entirely. That is the big dick vermin lord that only shows up in the end times. From the realm of ruin, Mother Truckers. And chilly Mother Trucker. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tratch is under Doomclaw. Judo Ocean with the $2. Thank you very much, my friend. Much appreciated. Fortune favors the infamous. Yeah, so believe me, guys, I've been I've been reading a lot of the comments, a lot of the discussion on Reddit and the forums about the uh, perceived imbalance between the two factions, Fortune between the sisters and between Throt. Interesting to talk about. We'll probably discuss that at length during the stream. You guys aren't necessarily wrong, but I think there is an important point a lot of people are kind of ignoring in that whole discussion. But I'm gonna focus on this battle for right now. You know what, we'll get them back in with the rest of the infantry so we don't mass route. Storm Vermin can be the first one in. Corlos are being idiots. Talion Spurticus with 30! I moderately tolerate you. Yeah, eh, I guess I'm okay sometimes, occasionally. I'm nothing like special. Thank you, man. Much appreciated. All right, so in the center, we're going to get our asses beat. Nothing surprising there. Actually, what I could do. Let's cast some Warp Lightning. Oh, it's, it's going to feel good. It's going to feel so good. Ah, that wasn't amazing. <laughs> I tried. I tried my best. Rat Ogres are squishy AF, boys. Look at that. They are melting right now. Alright, so let's check it. Regen? You have regen? I think that stacks, guys. It's not giving them the regen trait. I actually think that will stack with uh, Brood Horrors. Get you guys all the way around. Do a little bit more cycle charging with these bad boys. And we'll focus all our fire from the slingers on the unshielded side of those units right there. Spartacus, the Italian meatball, has shown up in the chat. Ready, ready. I don't know what he has planned today, but I'm sure he's got plenty of content coming. So if you guys want to check that out, Italian Spartacus is the man. At once. 
Let's uh, change your deployment here a little bit so you get better line of sight. Rat ogres are getting the crap beat out of them. That is for sure. Should be regening. Yeah, cool. We'll break this flank and then collapse in on the center. Yeah, you can keep chasing those corollars. There we go. That's what we need. All options in lab. Yeah, I'll mouse over them if you want to see that. Uh, I think we can get Throt, Mutant Rat Ogre, and the Packmaster on the Lord. And once Thorgard Cropson's gone, should be good. I'm not too worried about the, uh... The Wolf Rats, they're very easy to replace. And they're frankly not amazing versus Dwarfs. But I think we got this. Alright, let's pull the Rat Ogres out now. Getting the crap beat out of them. Why are you just sitting there doing nothing? Come here. Yeah, as I said, early games game and not amazing versus dwarfs. Like, your infantry is just not that good at killing dwarf warriors. But, once we get those brood horrors in the army, I think we're going to be in much better position. And I love how people say that I'm saying brood horror, which, to be honest, it kind of does sound like that, I guess. But, like, that's how Americans say horror. Like, we don't... We don't accentuate the second part of that sentence. We don't go like horror every time we say that word. We just say horror. So yeah, when you say it fast, it sounds like horror, but it's horror. Horror. <laughs> Your mom's a horror. Your dad's a horror. Uh, Rat Ogres can go kill them. Can you go away, please? Just shoot them. Guard mode on that. Would you die, please? Yes, I just said I'd show all options in the lab, man. <laughs> oh my god, my storm vermin are actually getting pooped on. Yeah, we gotta kill that lord. Get a couple more shots in from behind, we should be good. Yeah, Thrawn is not great at killing lords. Neither is the mutant rat ogre, man. That magical attack is not helping at all. There we go, mess row. Okay, let's hunt them down a bit. I guess they don't have anywhere to go. In fact, you know what? Let's look at some combat animations. Let's see if they do anything special. I've actually not seen. I've only played with mutant rat ogres in one battle in uh, multiplayer, so I don't even know what their animations look like. That is a rat ogre animation, as you would expect. Where's the blood? Oh, I have blood. I have blood effects turned off right now. It's maybe not the worst idea, but let, let's change that. So one of the things I hate about playing in early access is that I can't use the less blood, less gore mod, which is like essential. <coughs> I am hoping that Creative Assembly adds a slider in uh, Warhammer 3 that is used exactly like Three Kingdoms and in Troy, where you can change how much blood is actually like shown on the units, but the blood pack is honestly bad in Warhammer 2. It's it's not well done at all. The fact that in five seconds after entering, entering melee combat, these guys are covered in tomato sauce and you can't even see the, the beautiful models that Kratos Assembly made. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> and it was the same for game one too. So it seems like the standard now for Creative Assembly and Blood Packs, at the very least, is that they'll put a slider in so you can control how much blood there is, but yeah, it's really frustrating. As it is ugly AF, boy. Uh, do a couple more attacks and we'll end this one. It looks like all uh, Rat Ogre animations. I know Gorich has some unique ones with evisceration and stuff, but... Dude, I'm so pissed. I won't bring it up much in stream. I know the last time we covered, well, the Charles Zine stream was the last stream I did. And the reason I haven't been streaming is because of this heartburn and the nausea it's been causing. But man, I popped Pepto Bismol. I popped baking soda, teaspoon of that in water. I ate 
and everything, and I'm still nauseous right now. So I'm gonna pop a pep Pepsi and hope that does something. I'd rather not vomit on stream today. Although it might be kind of funny. All right. Scare, scare for enemy things. Is it important to level this up right now? I mean, probably not. I will do that for the major settlements. Maybe the capital of Crack Attract, but I don't think I'll do that for this one. Just keep the growth coming in good. Eh, you know what? Yeah, let's just do level two for now. See, that's something that I would know if I played a lot of Skaven campaign, but I don't. I play lots of other factions. I don't play Skaven. So, I don't know if people usually just, no matter what, will put level three. It doesn't really matter. Our economy is fine right now. But I have never played a full Skaven campaign, so maybe this will be our first. Yeah, I agree. I think growth is probably more important right now. We want to get help it up to max level real quick. Okay, so someone wanted to see... What does that mean? I don't know why it's in the red. We are getting some donations as well. We'll cover those in a second. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. All right, you wanted to see all the augments. Okay, let's do that. Well, I'll just mouse over them quick. Necroparasites. Red to oh my god, it makes- oh, that's so sick. So for infantry, we could make them... Zombies. That's pretty badass. Regeneration and perfect vigor. Random rare augments applies three at once. Last black dodo with the $20. Cheers. Cheers to you, my friend. Thank you. Weapon strength. Yeah, casualty your punishment's gone. Oh, God, that tastes like chalk. Oh, baby. Death Frenzy, we've got Encourage. Armor Piercing Charge Bonus. <laughs> Fear, Terror, Bone Elongation. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Elongate my bones. So I'm not seeing anything that like complete, <laughs> completely blows me away, but wow. Yeah, like we got smart feeding, cash to your punishment, upkeep, reduction. That's pretty good. And also early in the skill tree as well. So infantry stuff is nice, but that one sounds like the coolest by far. Zombie Skaven is awesome. Acidic musk glands. So this is like a flock of doom almost, but it also lowers armor. Weak versus single combatant, but it'll be better against big groups of enemies, okay. So that's just AOE direct damage. That's, is it constant? No, 19 seconds. Okay, yeah, it's, it's basically like a, a flock of doom or a sword of death for Durthu. The hunger crumbling, disintegrating, undead. <laughs> that makes literal undead Skaven with the blood worm. Same thing as the infantry. And that doesn't seem very good. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't replenish with them because you can get your casualty replenishment. Well, you know, yeah, you can you, you can get it higher than that. So I don't think that prevents them from ever casualty replenishing again, but that's something you'd want on like a regenerating monster, like a brood whore, like a help and abomination. You don't want this on like rat ogres because as soon as they lose a model, you're sad. Stock unspottable, flaming attacks, cellular instability. What does that give us? Powerful explosion and, okay, so it's basically like Queek Head Takers, uh, Verminous Valor. All right, bonus versus infantry, weeping blade, but minus 100 armor. So you could put that on a, no, I was gonna say you could put it on a Death Runner, but they already have weeping blade. So I wish this would be a different contact effect or like stackable. Guardian. And then in the lab itself, you can... Oh, so we haven't really covered this at all. There are Flash Lab upgrades as well. So this stuff unlocks a little bit later. We need to get that growth fat up to level four or five, but it unlocks even more powerful stuff. So 
Ward save. You get 10% for any unit with 4 plus augments. That's pretty good. Upkeep reduction for any instability or unstable units. Enlarged vat growth. Increased flesh lab mutagen capacity from 100 to 200. Okay. There's some cool stuff in there for sure. So a catch to your punishment is not amazing right now. That is why we're researching always more besides. That gives us plus 5%. Then I think we'll work towards maybe strength in numbers. But we also need to work on the growth. So growth plus 10 faction wide is pretty good. We'll work on those. I do not know what is different on the research tech tree. I can quickly mouse over everything for you guys if you notice something that is different. Nothing is immediately popping out to me. This looks pretty standard, but... I'm trying to see. <laughs> yeah, you can replenish in battles. They can regen over the starting amount of HP. Yeah, but still, I mean, minus 100% casualty replenishment is a big deal. There's a reason why you try to buff it up for all of your units. It's a pretty big nerf to what that, that unit's able to do. So you do want it on something like a help and abomination, I would think. Yeah, this is not looking... Tell you what, if you see... I'm going to quickly mouse over everything. If you see one, let me know, and I'll go back to it. But nothing's really jumping out. Practice Garters. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, plus two for Pack Masters, Monstrous Abominations. These might be new. Yeah, these are these are, these are are new. Right here. Add a help and a bomb unit to the army spawn from the Vermintide Undercity building. Definitely wolf rat stuff is new. Bonus for infantry weapon strength. Volatile plans was definitely there before. Okay. Cool. Show unique building. I can do that. Alright, so in Hell Pit. We do start with the lower levels of Hell Pit. It gives us food, public order, growth juice, upkeep, reductions for all rat ogres and Hell Pit abominations map wide. That should be for mutant rat ogres as well. And some scam and corruption. When we get it up to here, we get a lot more growth juice. Get recruitment cost reduction, recruit rank. Pretty smectual stuff right there. And we also start with a breeding stock unit. So we'll be able to recruit some rat ogres very soon. And that will actually probably make up the core of our anti-dwarf armies. I am the unclean. Did we lose any units? No. Twist, bend, mangle, experiment. Build some growth in there for now. Regen up, kill that off, and then move towards Cracker Track. In fact, we could, theoretically, leave them. They're going to go back and start replenishing their numbers, but... I want to get that melee defense up for him. When comes the A-bomb doomstack? Uh, we're not going to work towards the A-bombs right now. Um, we're fighting dwarfs, so we want brood whores, and we don't want to wait another... It would probably be another 10 turns before abominations would become available. But look at how fast this thing is filling up right now. Like, the passive gain is 60, so it only takes, like, two turns to get to the next level of the growth vat. Which means, in about three more turns... We should be able to uh, poop out some brood horse, which will be dope. So whip of domination, kill 1,000 enemies in battle. That'll be the first part of our quest chain there. Creature killer as well. Embed a warlock engineer in the following army. Okay. Easy enough. How do you get Gorich? So he's his own unique quest chain. That will pop around at a certain level. I'm not actually sure when it pops. It doesn't show up on his uh, tree at all. But I would imagine by like turn 30 or so, the first part of that quest chain will pop. So we'll try to get to that point if we can. There are multiple battles in that quest chain though. We're fighting dwarfs, so I think getting some... No, you know what? Let's go for the poison. The poison might actually be more effective against Dali. Let's go Tide of Pox. 
Do I move on him immediately? I think so. What's his garrison looking like? He has no walls. Yeah, we can, we can literally just move in right now. But you know what, though? It might it might be a good idea to wait for the brood horrors just to make sure. They're gonna get a second army up anyway, unless we attack immediately. So we could wait two turns, get brood horrors, and ensure we win that fight. I think I'd rather do that. No, they do not. The poison rats do not have magical attacks. It's two separate entities. So the warpstone teeth ones have lower base stats and AP, but they have magical attacks. The Pox Rats have higher base stats. They do not have magical attacks. I am the yeah, they're gonna get a... Twist, bend, mangle, experiment! <laughs> Bifurcate! <laughs> Actually, you know what might be the best thing for me to do? Yeah, wait for the Brood Horrors. They're going to recruit a second army that's outside Krakadrak. Then we can attack them on the open field and force an open field battle. That'll make my life so much easier than trying to play a siege battle. Frankly, I don't like playing sieges. They are really lame in this game. They're horrible. I cannot wait for Kratos somebody to fix them. So let's do that instead. We might have to wait a few turns, but I think that's the game plan. All right, help it. We're looking good here. That's about to be level three. We have already popped the dominating scheme to get growth faction wide, which is super nice. And then do I... A warlock, engineer, hero, capable of destroying a foreign settlement. To either establish an undercity or cause a catastrophic earthquake, which will be summoned at your faction leader. Okay. That's not a horrible idea. That sounds kind of fun. It's only 800 gold. Purest warp stoner. Scurry forward! Establish a warlock laboratory. We could do that. Or we could just blow it up. We won't do that yet. I want to time that with my brood whores, which are available. Oh, it's interest. I thought it was brood whores were before mutant rat ogres. We already have brood whores. Nice. Okay, that was way faster than I thought it was. I must eat feed. <sighs> okay, so we summoned them. We already got them. Two brood whores, two wolf rats, 110 mutant gin, which I can use to upgrade my units. And my flesh lab itself. That's dope, man. Like, brood whores, you saw in the battle yesterday when I played against Shannon on occasion, they are effing good. 95 speed, regen... High melee defense, or at least when Throt or a pack master is riding them. Probably less so for the actual unit itself, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to get rid of a, maybe... I guess the Slingers at this point, they're really not super useful. Hunger. Hunger. And they cost zero to recruit, which is dope. So it's going to be 221 upkeep, which is not going to break the bank in any way, shape, or form. And now we got two brood whores in. Augmentation is available to strengthen your units, my lord. Using certain combinations of augmentations may unlock access to other, more complex procedures. And those complex procedures are, of course, exactly what we're working on. So we now have brood whores in the army at turn 11. Which is fantastic. Look at the stats, by the way. 425 weapon strength, high AP, great AP split, and poison, which is essentially a ward save in melee. Low armor, of course, but that's being buffed up. And pack masters will give them double regen. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> that's really, really good. G Nedges 84, SEK 100. Oh, Buy yourself something pretty. Oh, baby. Thank you, man. Let's uh, hit end turn here and then check if there were any ones that I missed earlier. There might have been. We're going to regen a little bit more. What do you want, Throg? Trade? 
I don't think I'm gonna let him stay alive is the thing. Like, I think I... Oh, you know what? That's unpleasant climate. That surprises me. I guess because it's not mountainous. So maybe I will be friends with Throg. And then I can focus on, like, Kislev or something. Okay, you know what? We'll try it. Fortune favors the infamous. A little bit of trade with Throg Daddy is not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, thank you for the 20 last black dodo. Much appreciated, man. Uh, uh, who are you? Okay, yeah, so I forgot about this. So if you don't use your mutagen, which is the byproduct of when you summon the uh, growth app monsters, then it goes away. So because we, well, if it goes over the cap. So we have the 100 cap, we went over it, rest of it will go down. So we can actually expand it to 200 and we'll work on doing that. But for now, can't do that, so. Do I want to kill the Norskins that just showed up on my doorstep? That is the real Fortune question. Fortune favors the infamous. Stay underground. Safinara with the five. Always love your content, my dude. Would love to see more campaigns from you too. Some more Vermintide as well. Lots of Vermintide coming. I'm, I'm just frustrated, man. We went five months with nothing special nothing going on and then it all dropped at the exact same time so i just have to go into overdrive to get all my content out it's really frustrating blasted pancakes with the 20 the thickest of rat boys thank you man he is indeed he's a fat boy he knows how to shake that ass shake that ass for me shake that ass for me and atlas 99 with the 40. i'll read that in one second you guys are being way too generous thank you all right well, let's focus on this for a second though Breeding pit. Um, tell you what, we definitely want to get the pits of the Packmaster up right now. That'll give us Packmasters, which will be a big part of our armies here. I think you guys want to see battles, right? Who wants to see some battles with Brood Horrors? Brood Horrors. <laughs> Are you friends with Throg? I don't want to screw up anything if you're... Nah, you're at war with Crackerjack too. So I want you off my doorstep because you're going to declare war on me otherwise. So let's murder you. Oh, 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 oh. Fortune favors oh. infamous. Oh, berserkers. Oh, it's a full army of those. Oh. Alright. <laughs> Maybe I should have checked that before I doubt him. No, it's alright. Yeah, that's that's the kind of stuff that's uh that's entertaining. You guys want to see the, the ridiculousness. So we might need to ratchet it up here for a second. All right, so what do we have? Came here to see auto resolves. That's the lamest thing I've ever heard in my life. BP day with the 10, thanks so much, man. Yeah. Yeah, do it until we get an ambush. What's the point of leveling up my ambush chance if I never get ambushes? Use some mutagen? Alright, well, let's, let's take a look at the flesh lab here real quick and see what we can do. Yeah, we can definitely make our clan rats better. Giving them frenzy, that would certainly help some. Um, Vanguard stock, not really useful here. What kind of monstrous augment would be worth using? Definitely weapon strength and melee attack. That's not bad at all. So you go for two that are random. Charge bonus, base weapon damage. Actually, base weapon damage here is more useful than the AP because I'm fighting Norskins. Or Lightning Rod is also super useful. Um, let's go charge bonus and 20% weapon damage. It's actually super good. Like God, God. <laughs> Maybe one warp lightning rod on one of my brood whores. Oh crap. I didn't realize. Yeah, I forgot. So he already came with something base. So he turned into an unstable mother trucker immediately. Which is not the biggest deal with them, because again they regen, but we're not giving him any more. Um 
All right. Let's see how that goes. With all this terror, I don't actually think this is too much of a problem. And he's in forced march dance, so he's going to be tired. We should be okay. It doesn't matter, dude. We're not moving anywhere on this turn anyway. So trying it multiple times, whether it works or not, like we're still going to fight the battle. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> all right. Yeah, and that would not surprise me if you don't ambush on the first try if it doesn't work again. Okay, so Berserkers. They are a little bit of a problem here. Not really a big deal. I think we got this. What we do need to do, though, is create a united front and not give them the map-wide formation they want. So if I went, like, if I spread really wide here and just took one-on-one -on -one engagements with each of those Berserkers, they would run through me in about five seconds flat. So... If you're fighting a superior enemy in a melee grind, you definitely want to uh, keep like a more compact formation. We'll keep the Brood Horrors on the flanks. It's definitely possible they could mess me up. I mean, anytime you're on very hard and Berserkers are Berserkers, like 52 weapon strength, like they are meant to slaughter Skaven infantry. So we'll have to use the monster as well. See, are there any ranged troops I have to worry about a lot? Not really. This is definitely gonna hurt. We're gonna lose some units here for sure. All right, so this is level one of instability. It causes severe damage to itself once it gets to 75% HP, but again, It'll be regenerating, so not the biggest deal in the world. And it has Warp Lightning, so I need to remember which units have it. These two. We'll maybe keep them all together. How do you get the unique Rat Ogre Hero? Gorich, yeah, he's in a his own quest chain. So that'll be a little bit later on in the campaign, I think. Um, hell, I think we just blob up, man. I think literally that's the way we do it. Blob up, cycle charge with the brood horrors in the rear, and that should be how we win this one. Still, though, the fact that those berserkers have such high weapon strength scares me, because even for the mutant rat ogres and the rat ogres themselves, like, they're going to take a lot of damage in a grinded out fight. A tide of pox might actually come in very handy here. And we do have some extra clan rats coming in as well. Okay. Will we have an early humiliation and be slaughtered by the Zerker hordes. We shall find out soon enough. You know what? While they're isolated, let's just murder them. 95 speed. The Brood Horror is unleashed. Rufus the naked mole rat from Kim Possible coming in hot. Ah, so the regen doesn't even help it against that. Well, it helps a little bit, but not a lot. Now, if I get fully surrounded here, it's going to hurt them because they have low armor. So if you want to keep running away like that, that's fantastic. Keep doing it. We'll move out to the flank. We'll get these guys over here too. And just get all the infantry blobbed up. Yeah, they're doing great for me right now. They're munching on stuff. They're so awesome. Like, this is probably one of my favorite units in the entire DLC. Them and the Great Stags are so much fun to use. Any shock monster or monstrous cavalry with high maneuverability is what I'm all about. Oops. Uh. 
streamer's curse, boys. Let's uh retreat here. Honestly, we can just cycle charge a lot with the brood orders for now. Like, they're taking some damage, but they're doing a ton to the Zerkers, and they'll get all that health back, so it's all good. AI is gonna get pissed at me eventually, but. Don't worry guys, I'm really good at this game. Probably the best player on planet Earth. Okay, so all my reinforcements coming over on this side. I will get to all of your donations after this battle. No problem, just don't wanna spend the entire stream <laughs> reading those out, but thank you so much. You guys have been awesome. All right, so yeah, the, the Marauder Horseman coming up. I think we just go in. I just brute force it, which is kind of what Mulder's all about. It's what we do. All right, let's go in. Maybe strike at them with them. All right, send them right into the center and fight them. All right, where are the storm vermin at? Yeah, good, okay. Gotta make sure those brute horrors are not dying. Gonna keep them cycle charging. Root horrors are fine for now. We can actually pop a warp. Oh, and oh, I used the wrong one. Okay. Pass that right now. Looking good on that side. Some more cycle charging done. Maybe tie up all that cow. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, break this flank right here real quick. Yeah, the terror is kicking in now. They've lost their frenzy. The terror! Summon some of them pox rats, huh? Yeah, munch him up, baby. Munch him up. Healing good. All right, Rat Ogre's definitely going to pull out of that now. We're getting beat up. Oh, well, this side probably not going to go so well for me. We can actually support him a little bit better. Oh, the Brute Horrors are fantastic. Ooh, Packmaster's starting to get beat up, too. Ooh. Bad leadership. Bad leadership on them. Alright, Rat Ogre Summon on the Spears to help deal with them. Oh, they're starting to get beat up, too. Let's pull you guys back. They're gonna route off, but they will regenerate, so we're fine there. Keep munching them on that side. And, uh, maybe if we can get up on him, that would be good for us. Yeah, alright. Come on in. Let's kill the Lord. Once the Lord's dead, we're gonna be- oh, I misclicked that. It's gonna do some friendly fire to me. Alright, come on in. Yeah, he routed off super fast. Packmaster is back, that means more regen. We gotta focus on the Zerkers in the center now. Just keep the Brood Horrors away from the Marauder Cabin, we're fine. Keep shooting those. That's gonna be mass round a second here. Okay. I didn't lose too much important stuff either. That regeneration is just super nice. Keep the Brood Horror on the Lord. And I think that'll be army losses. Alright, so yeah, we have to take care of them just because they're going to rampage through my lands and they'll probably down me soon anyway. I would have rather waited until this was all done with Crack-A-Track. Unfortunately, 
They could come in from behind and start gobbling up settlements if I'm not careful. So I think getting rid of all those Zerkers early is probably the right call. And we'll regen up quick and move on Krakadrak next. But yeah, you're right. I think d destroying the walls immediately would have been a bad call because they would have just built them back up again before I was able to attack. Definitely want to run these down. Are there official patch notes? Not yet, man. Uh, that'll be closer to launch. Usually a day or two before launch, they'll release those. So we could cover some of the major changes coming, but we couldn't like go through and read them all out. We have early patch notes right now. Yeah, dude, that's that's one thing that's nice about this early access stuff, and one of the things that I hated about <laughs> big game releases when I was growing up, man. It blows to be at work, and you know waiting at home there's something you're really excited to play, and you just gotta try to get through the day. That 8 or 10 hours is always the most brutal thing ever. Ah, oh, true, they are in Force March. That's a good point. Okay. Right now, I'd rather go for replenishment because we gotta fight a lot of battles. So we won't take the money. Twist bend, mangle, experiment. Yeah, and the brood horrors are still in good shape. So we might get a second army soon-ish, but our economy can't quite handle it yet. Instead, we'll focus on building up our home base. We do have some trade going with Throg, so that's probably... No, I don't think I want to do that. Ooh, Plague Monks would be really useful right now, to be honest. I know it's a Molder DLC, but actually Play Claws would too. And to get the creature killer. <coughs> I need a Warlock Engineer in my army. So maybe we do that. Also unlocks Virulent Plans, which gives me what? Yeah, that's pretty good. Hmm. Well, either way, we're going to go with Arsh Production Quotas at the moment. Essentially, this is kind of the thing about Skaven now. They have so many good units, especially when you're fighting against Dawi and Norska in the early game. Like, there's a lot of stuff I could do here. Having choices is nice. Definitely gonna build one of these. Because that'll make my income quite a bit better for all my buildings here. Where do I go? Yeah, play cl I think play claws are probably the play cuz it'll make my it'll make my siege gameplay so much easier. So much more fun to watch too, so I don't have to just like jerk my dick at the gate for 20 minutes straight. Sorcerer, inventor. Yes, yes. Throt. Okay, so Throt, we're looking at probably looter at this point. Yeah, I mean, like, buffing up the clan rats and stuff is nice, but then it'll only be for... I can only play up to 60 turns today. Up to turn 60. So, I can't go super hard. So, we're gonna go... Looter for now, and then Draft Master after that. Which is boring, but blue line is super good, so... Definitely tied to death. How do you deal with the Chaos Invasion in this campaign? To be honest, I've, I've not gotten that far, so I have no idea. Uh, I, th I think you'll have some diplomatic bonuses with them, right? Because you're going to be up against a lot of the factions they start at war with. So you'll probably have some di diplomatic bonuses right away. But that doesn't mean they won't dow you. You can be kind of on friendly terms and they're like, you know what, you're in my way, I'm going to kill you. So on Legendary, if you're playing the Legendary Chaos Invasion, because there's a slider, you can put it all the way up to Legendary. That's going to get pretty scary. I must <coughs> Alright, one more turn. We should be good. Help it looking sexy. You what? You what, mate? Master Lord of Take a look at uh, what these idiots are doing. 
Or Mounting Tribe. Yeah, they're gonna have another stack of Zerkos here soon. So I'll need to I'll need to move quick. It's fine. I mean, I'll probably lose Sawjack Track into them. But we do need to move on Crack and Track probably next turn. Be my guess. Yeah, we'll keep you right there. And then burn down the walls, then move on it. Don't get Lightning Strike with Skaven. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, the higher ambush chance, it doesn't matter that much. I, Chaos Waste doesn't look different to me, man. I guess this was this black before? It probably was. No, Morphage is gone. Hmm. Maybe I, I, did, I might. I actually maybe needed to wait one more turn to do that. Cause I'm. Oh wait, can I attack? Nope. I thought I was in movement range. My bad. Okay. Uh, Kazid looking good. Help it looking super smashable over there. Zerkers are not ready to attack me from behind. Yeah, we'll fight them next turn, and then play claws after that. All right. So for any donations I might have missed, looking at those now. Oh baby. Atlas99, $40. Hey, Andy, just got off work, and I'm looking forward to the stream. Keep up the good work, and much love from Namibia. From Africa. What's going on, man? Dude, that's crazy. Like, this is one of the things I love about YouTube so much. Like, people all over the planet, all coming together for love of the same stuff. Thank you for the donation, man. Much appreciated. All right, so right now we got the Armor of Destiny. That's ward safe, physical resistant armor. That's actually super good for Throt. <laughs> we can feed gorge on anything, yes? <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, that just straight up murdered that settlement. And now we can find him on the open plain, too. Well, there we go. Take our time with it. You know, I like I like going for the big battles as much as you guys, but... Sometimes, you gotta fight this game away. I'm gonna roleplay it. Try to have one empty, worthless army as bait and ambush with the main force. It'll draw out enemies from cities even worse consistently. I like it. I'm not sure we're going to need it because we'll have play claw catapults very soon and get four or five of those in the army and we can pretty much take any siege. But I do like the idea. Okay, I don't have to worry about this one too much. We got 2,000 people on stream. Thank you guys so much for coming and check it out. I hope the twist in the twilight is up to your illustrious specifications. Definitely the Mulder side will be, I think. <laughs> There's been more debate about the Wood Elf side. Any range troops I gotta worry about? Nah, no Corlers. They got charge defense, but it doesn't matter. Look at that tide of Raki. Blob, blob. Come on, do it. Do it. That is a lot of fun. Man, rat ogres are squishy as well. They're fighting engineers and they're getting, or miners and they're getting wrecked that bad. What the hell? <laughs> Jesus. All right, mutant rat ogre, come over here. Chomo's boss.
Well, that's a mass route real quick. Well, to answer your question, man, why I'm recruiting clan rats, for one, with Throthy Unclean, you, you can make them all way better, which is kind of a big deal in and of itself, right? Like, give them Frenzy, that'll make them actually quite a decent low-tier infantry that can hold the line. Uh, against Crack-A-Track, I don't think Scam and Slaves are going to cut it, man. I mean, you could go for, like, a full Slinger army, I guess, but they all have 90 armor and shields, so that's probably not worth just having, like, a anvil you can actually trust to hold. To an extent. Is, uh, probably better than going full Scam and Slave spam this early. And also, I don't know if you guys have figured this out yet. I don't min-max my campaigns ever. I am the antithesis of the, uh, do-everything-perfect playstyle. I don't feel like doing it. I don't want to do it. There's... An element that's fun, like going for a full, like, single entity spam, that kind of thing, the, the, the power stack spam, the doom stacks, that can be fun. But generally speaking, when I play campaign, I want to keep it relatively close to, like, how the playstyle for this faction would actually be. And that means I'm not going to be bringing 19 stacks of hell pit abominations. It doesn't feel like Skaven if I don't have infantry. You gotta get those swarms going. Yeah, so the, the Reddit and the Sisters of Twilight debacle. That's an interesting one. I think an important thing to remember about any of these DLCs is that the updates in the free LC part of the Twist and the Twilight or Grom the Punch, any of the DLCs we've seen so far are not going to happen if people don't buy the DLC, right? The only reason, the only reason we are getting free LC updates for old world races is because of the DLCs themselves. So I feel like it's a teeny bit disingenuous to automatically discount what happens in the free LC part of the update because it's being funded by the DLC. So yeah, they're separate. Yes, it is true, objectively, <coughs> that the Sisters of Twilight DLC God damn it. After... Um, <coughs> one second. This shit sucks, dude. God damn it. Oh, I cannot wait till it's over. <laughs> Sorry. I think I threw up a little bit in my mouth. Oh, baby. I mean, it's a very throt me unclean kind of stream, right? I'm like vomiting everywhere. It's great. I'm just role playing, guys. <laughs> Where was I? Yeah, so the sisters have worse mechanics. No question about it. Like the, the Forge of Dave is kind of lame. It's kind of boring. But the Wood Elves got an amazing rework. And I think straight up discounting that side of it is a little bit disingenuous is my basic point with that said it is fair to say the skaven have gotten more loving than the factions they've been paired up with in almost every single dlc we've seen so far and it is surprising that it's been such a hard and fast complaint from you guys and they still made that mistake right like it's still very possible to give the sisters some more unique mechanics that you guys can jerk your dicks over and still have the free LC part of the update. So, I don't know. I personally have played a lot of Sisters so far, and I actually think their campaign is super fun. But I think it is fair to say that their campaign is super fun because of the Wood Elves update, not necessarily because their own unique mechanics are amazing. But on the battlefield, and you guys saw it in the, uh, the battle we had yesterday against the Beastmen, like, it was dope. Like, they are, they are a force. They are super fun to use. And they're super strong, too. 
So I think you guys will still end up enjoying the uh, sister side of the update a lot. Personally, so far, I've enjoyed the sister side more than Throt the Unclean. But like I said, I've only played about maybe 20 turn, 20, 25 turns of Throt the Unclean so far. So I don't have a full picture of how he's uh, how he's feeling. And obviously, the reason I haven't played as much as I'd like to is because I'm already making videos for multiplayer and the overview, patch note stuff, all that stuff. So I've been working my ass off over the last couple of days and all that has been dealing with a uh, pretty severe nausea too, which is not my favorite thing in the world. So apologies for being a pox rat. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best, boys. All right. Their walls are still damaged. It's level one. Their garrison is a little bit beat up as well. I think we just go straight in. We're doing good on the food surplus at the moment. I'm not going to have play claw catapults for this battle, but we don't need them. Ooh, minus eight leadership for a brood whore would be fantastic. Let's do that. At the same time, though, and, and maybe this is Creative Assembly's fault. Um, looking at a pure, like purely at the numbers of mechanics a faction gets, or purely at how like fancy it looks on paper, is maybe not the best way to approach it either. Like personally, I think Throughout the Unclean's Flesh Lab is pretty cool, and it definitely opens up playstyles and lets you do cool stuff with units and everything. But it doesn't blow my mind. Like, compared to Ickit Claw's ca campaign stuff, and frankly, it's using the skeleton of Ickit Claw's laboratory for the Flesh Lab anyway. I think just, like, looking at it from that standpoint, I don't think every lord in the game needs to have the craziest new mechanic. They don't need to do that every single campaign, because it'll be a never-ending cycle. Every single time they put something new and crazy in the game, we're going to compare it to that. There are some factions that just aren't going to be as over the top as others, and I think that's fine. I mean, Icky Claw's campaign is busted. It's super fun, but it's not really the most well-designed campaign in Mortal Empires because it's stupid OP. Like, everything you do in that campaign is easy. It's easy because the lab is so broken. It's easy because Icky Claw is so broken. Which is fine to have that kind of stuff, but we shouldn't expect that as the baseline for every campaign to come after it. Are the walls actually b torn down here? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't really matter, because we can just brute horror it up and kill the gates, but... Storm Vermin in the front. Party in the back, mother truckers. We're not really going to be able to cheese the crap out of the siege much, are we? Actually, maybe, maybe rat ogres hang back because they're going to get pooped on otherwise. Dodge this. You idiots, you can't hit anything. You're stupid. That gate should yeah, oh my oh my god. Five percent every attack? That's disgusting. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna be through real quick. Ugh. We're through, baby. Clam Molder. Hello. Hello, Puppet. I'm home. 
I think we can just straight up take that fight. There's not a whole lot that can deal with me there. Maybe get some summons in here too. God, the, the amount of summons they have now is insane. Maybe, yeah, let's go kill the Corlers. <coughs> Rat Ogre summon here too. Get you guys inside and start murdering people. Yeah, we can just try to take that blob fight, man. That's what that's what Mulder's good for. Not a whole lot I can do about it. Can't wait for Okoy to play with the DLC. Yeah, he, his content has been hilarious, consistently hilarious. I believe he's also a subscriber. He comments on a decent amount of my videos. I'm famous, boys. Okoy watches my content. Ooh. Feels good, man. Yeah, they're gonna melt here at the gate. Get all these guys in too. Where am I storm vermin at? Getting pooped on by miners. Yeah, makes sense. Totally. Go for as long as I can, boys. I'm grinding. I'm doing it. Oh, so brutal. So goddamn brutal. Alright, so I need to shut down these quarrelers somehow. I think... Some clan rats up there would help a lot. If we buy the DLC, do we need what Elf DLC from first to play the sisters? No. It is completely separate. And that's the nice thing about this DLC for DLC scenario we got going on right now. You do not have to do anything like that. You can straight up buy sisters and just play sisters in Warhammer 2. You do not need the previous DLC. But if you have the previous DLC, you can play as Dreitcha, the Briar Maven of Woe. Which is nice. I mean, playing as a... Angry Branch Wraith from Hell is pretty dope. Am I really gonna lose my Storm Vermin? No, I think they're fine, but we're just doing poop. I need spell casting in this army. That is one thing that definitely needs to happen. So when that Plague Claw Catapult building gets finished up, we'll put some uh, Warlock Engineers in my army. Maybe do the Okoy spam and bring 20 of them, baby. Make it rain, warp lightning. Alright. I think we can dive in on the Quirlers and cast a warp lightning here. 
Ah, no, miners are in my way. Goku out the Lord, bring the Brute Horse back, tear out them at the front gate. And I think we double fast forward this because there's nothing else going on. Might lose a couple clan rats, but no biggie. Yeah, terror route's imminent here. Uh, they're getting beat up by something. Uh, mutant rat over here. Pull the rat ogres back. And that is army losses. Easy enough. Did I know that Throt's voice actor was contacted by the devs of Warhammer because they heard an impression of Throt during a YouTube video? Yeah. Yeah, that guy's done impressions for a lot of characters, actually. I think he did Grom, he did Altharion, and he did a bunch of others. I personally, and th that's awesome, like anyone who's from the community and has been playing for a long time that can get that kind of job, that's really sick, and I hope they paid him handsomely for it. I don't actually know how they usually handle those things. I'm sure he got paid. But... I want to see Henry Cavill do something, man. Like, he's our prince. He is a Warhammer fanboy through and through. I don't know how much he loves Warhammer Fantasy. I know he does play Warhammer too. He's mentioned it before. I think he's more of a 40k guy. I know he plays Adeptus Custodes, which is awesome. But uh, I think it wouldn't be an easy thing to get him in, obviously, because he's an A-list actor and he's in a bunch of like really big movies. It'd probably be difficult to get him in the studio, but if it's possible. I'm trying to think what character he'd be good for in Warhammer 3. You could probably voice act for a demon. Maybe like a Sineshi character would be cool. If uh, Azazel, Prince of Damnation gets added, I could see Henry Cavill doing that. Well, I can make that tier four, but that would hurt me. Let's go tier three. <laughs> Is war with Crack Track over? Are they done? Obtain access. I thought it was a yeah embed warlock engineer in his army. Okay. Creature killer is super good, man. Bonus first large and an AOE. If I'm fighting Norska. Or Chaos or the Empire. That's gonna be that's gonna come in handy for sure. Alright, so that's that's the game plan. We'll work towards those. Oh, okay. We gotta kill this army first. Crack a drag in good shape now. I don't think I don't think Thankwall would be a very Henry Cavill character. I'm not sure that would work too well. But we definitely want walls here. Plague Monk building would not be bad. Let's go for that. Get a couple Plague Monks in this army. That'll really help me against Norska. What your bat tail? I want the growth building here, so I think we'll just trash that. Okay, so help it is in good shape. Got decent growth going. We have leveled up Throt the Unclean. And we can work on Draftmaster now. Yeah, no lightning strike for that, but upkeep reduction for my whole army would be super sweet. And then we'll work on Remoldered soon enough. And we'll get that second army in here too, soon as well. All right. Packmaster, good to go. At level 9 is when they get the second summon. Man, pack masters are going to be so damn good. You can seriously just summon a million of these wolf rats. Build for growth right now. A lot of chaos corruption in these territories. Need to build up Skaven corruption too. Okay. Henry Cavill for every single character in Warhammer 3. Yeah, I'm probably down for that too. You have to pay him some serious money for that, I think, though. That's the downside. He, uh, he commands some serious money and some serious respect. And you better give it to him. He's Superman. He's my Superman. Purest warp stoner. 
Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose a unit or two here, I think, but I don't wanna fight it. Nice. Thank you. I must eat feed. Missile resist on that brood horror will actually end up being pretty useful, but I think we want to go for ooh, armor. Oh yeah, they have 20 armor base. I think it'll be more like 40 or 50 with the uh with the brood horror, but shot collar. So this is how we tether beast to our command. 24 melee attack, 16 leadership, immune to psych. That's pretty badass. We need six skill points though, so we need three more in our yellow tree, and we also need to work on this. So it'll actually be a while before we get that. Kind of sucks. Charge bonus, weapon strength. He'll be my duelist. Ah, feed me. All right, I am not gonna level up Sajra tracking yet because I think Norska is gonna be on my doorstep in a second here. For tech, we're gonna go. What is more important for me? Public order, campaign movement range is really good. That might be what we work towards next. Okay, I can level it up now. Oh. Stink of of betrayal strong. Get the public order under control there. Alright. War with the Gore Madney tribe coming in. This time, I'm hoping they won't have a full stack of Berserkers. Should make things a lot easier if they don't, but I'm gonna get aggressive with them now. Should only have to fight, like, one battle, and they'll be on the back foot, and pretty much dead after that. Okay, so we are up to Rat Ogre Cluster now. Let's see if we can get any more mutagen used. Use that Flesh Lab a little bit more. Or, we could pay for some of this. More, is that worth 3,000? Game and slaves are recruited with between one to five random augments. That's insane. Harvest organs. Don't need that yet, but that could come in handy. <coughs> I don't need any of that right now. Physical resist and speed, or base weapon and charge? I think we'll go for that. Quick, faster, me. That should make them a lot more effective in melee. And hell, we could go for a second one, speed and physical resist. But then they might maybe start degenning after they get the second one. I'm not sure that's worth it yet. So for infantry, I like the idea of maybe getting a couple more frenzy clan rats. Maybe buffing you up a bit more. That's the thing, I'm not sure how long I'll have these clan rats in my armies at this point. They'll probably get trashed soon, so... Use them like chaff. Upgrade all the important stuff. Which we've already done. Okay. Growth and help it. Growth here in a second. And we're good. The lab is insane, man. And it, it gets even crazier when you've got four or five stacks on something. Like I said, if you max level a monster or a infantry unit, it becomes a bloated corpse. If you have like five or more augments on it, it becomes a bloated corpse that just explodes and kills itself instantly, which is pretty hilarious. Sertha, Ek, and the Varg tribe. Yeah, I don't know that I'm going to move that much into uh, Norska. I think I'm going to hold on to this section of it and then move south into Kislev. Probably the game plan for me. I don't know that letting Norska get super strong is the best idea, but this is all unpleasant. Like, I don't I don't really want to move in there and fight all those Norskan tribes and their mammoths and their berserkers. Okay, 
I am Throt, the unclean. Take a look at this little scaven boat. We got a Plague Claw barge coming in. <laughs> Harvest organs. I swear to God. This is the most frustrating thing when you're trying to move somebody and you're literally sitting on top of the summit. It's like, oh yeah, you don't have enough movement range anymore. Yeah, cool. They have another army coming in? Not yet. They are taking forever to build that up too. All right. Yeah, that's a good point. Definitely gotta recycle those because it gives us more mutagen or growth juice at the very least. And pretty soon here, we're gonna get another brood. Actually, we might have it now. I get a little bit confused by this. Maybe war could help it. Wouldn't be the worst idea. Get some A-bombs. Uh, I'm gonna not risk it. I know it's annoying, but one of those situations where if I get a really screwy auto resolve that wipes an important unit and then that second army comes in immediately after could get a little bit more scary than it's supposed to be. So we'll just double fast forward to this one. Gorge isn't a storm fiend though. No, he's a, uh, he's a Norskin war chief who he didn't betray Archeon, but he was kind of glory hounding and he got basically lobotomized. Archeon gave him up and said, you know what? This guy didn't do what I told him to do. He got his army killed. I'm pissed. Uh, throughout the unclean. How about you take him to your lab and lobotomize the guy, turn him into a, a different kind of creature. Which Throt the Unclean was super happy about. Actually, we haven't even shown his close-up model yet. What did he just throw? And why is he already bloody? Is he taking damage right now? What's happening? Oh my god, he's eating a little rat. Oh my god, he just bit that rat's head off. He also has a uh, an animation where he eats some warp stone and just gobbles it down. There, he just hit it right there. That's a really dope model. But yeah, Gorge turned into a uh, the Castle of Hell Pit, and now he's kind of a rival of Throt the Uncleans, actually. Throt's not too happy about his meteoric rise in Skavendom after being transplanted into a rat ogre body. We will try to show off Gorge this stream. I don't know if we'll be able to get to that point, but I would like to. you guys in that army too? Does it mean it's worth now working for Mulder as Ashen? That's a good question. I don't actually know how they're gonna handle that. I don't know if it's gonna be... Ah, looks like Alpine Rage actually. I don't know if it's gonna be worth it to uh... Favors the infamous. To tackle like these Mulder DLC units as another faction. Like Clan Ashen gets so many buffs to gutter runners and stuff that maybe rocking with the full shuriken build is still the way to go. Rory Donaldson with the 50 NZ. Hey bro, love your work. Can't watch because work, but spread that plague. Love from New Zealand, man. Thank you so much. Uh stream will be on after it'll be up on my channel after this uh whole thing is over, so. It will be there for your viewing pleasure whenever you feel like it, my dude. Thank you. And we got plenty more multiplayer and big battle content coming soon. Really generous of you. Don't know that we want to just go straight in yet. Because of those trolls. Maybe wait for a rear charge here. Yeah, definitely the Packmaster and Throt can, can go in. I'm being smart, actually. They're keeping them behind the infantry. All right. We can just go on. Yeah, come charge me. Run over those broader hunters. Get the big monstrous blob going. That was... Wow, that was brutal. All right, this is just going to be over in five seconds, isn't it?
<laughs> that was brutal. That was pretty brutal, guys. Is there any way to make Storm Fiends in the lab? No, unfortunately it is not that. Not quite that in depth. If you want some Storm Fiend action, wait for Thankwell and Warhammer 3 would be what I said to that. I think, uh, because we already have confirmation that Thankwell is coming in Warhammer 3. And we have confirmation that Warhammer 3 is coming in 2021. My guess at this point would be fall 2021, like a September, October, November, something like that would be my guess. Um, we should have plenty of uh, other units to come along the side of the scaven there. So thank Wall, Storm Fiends, Vermin Lords. I think that would probably make a lot of sense. No, if Gorge can be recruited by other clans too, or just Molder. I imagine it's just Molder, man. I, I could be incorrect, considering how they're handling Ariel, and she could be recruited by the other Wood Elf Lords. It's possible they're doing the exact same thing. But my guess would be, he's kind of a Molder monster. So it kind of makes sense to make him a, a pure Molder monstrosity. I do not have confirmation on that though, because obviously I've not played any other Skaven campaigns. What I am excited for this update though, the Footlord changes are gonna make Queek and some others a lot more fun to play with on the battlefield, I think. Not that Queek himself was miserable before. Obviously he can beat up on AI no problem. It's in multiplayer that he kind of struggles a lot. AI doesn't do a great job of knocking Footlords over in the first place and gooding them out, but I think Queek should probably be a lot more fun. Still, I generally speaking, best way to play a Queek campaign, same as Malice Darkblade, Confederate them. <laughs> Just confederate them. It's by far the best way to play with them. Much death. Much meat flesh. Big scare scare for enemy things. Break I don't really need this as a highly leveled settlement. It's inhospitable anyway. I might end up abandoning these settlements. That is a new button now. I don't know if that's available to all factions in the game, but you can straight up abandon settlements and raise it to the ground yourself, which is cool. I like playing that Scorched Earth policy. If there's a certain region that you don't want, but you don't want your enemies to have either, just say bye to it. Maybe get like a few turns of economic bonus, maybe a few turns of garrison and just say, you know what? I don't want to defend this anymore. Peace. Public order is a problem in these settlements because of the chaos corruption, so we have to address that. Upkeep reduction for brood horrors will be pretty good. Yeah, they're 200 right now. It'll be less in a second. We could also buff them up though. Let's see. So charge bonus, wolf rats, rat ogres, mean rat ogres, brood horrors. So this is the molder one. It's just speed and charge bonus. This is actually one of my least favorite ones. Like charge bonus is nice because it increases melee attack on the charge, obviously, but the, the buffs just aren't amazing to, for three trait points here. The 10% is better. 10% speed is better on high movement speed stuff. But it also becomes a little bit redundant too. I don't know that that's even worth spending three trait points on. It doesn't seem like it is. I'll go upkeep reduction because we got play claw coming in. We're gonna finish up this war. I think that is their last settlement. I am pretty sure. We can go back to hell pit, get some play claws, and then we're good to go and start fighting some uh, bigger factions. Hmm. I know Pox. Yes, indeed. Skaven get negatives for chaos corruption? Yeah, they're not they're not chaotic. I am pretty sure they do. Skaven corruption and chaos corruption are at odds, so it would make sense to get diplomatic malices for that. No, I'm not good. Stop it. Stop it. DLC is out on December 3rd, my friend. My lord. News of your conquest Ooh. spreads far and wide. Your developing power is noted by even the most 
distant of kings and bestial lords. And bestial lords. So I can already go for another brood horror cluster. Let me look at the flesh lab once again. It's brood horror cluster, then mutant rat ogre cluster. Okay. Maybe we get more mutant rat ogres? I don't know. I really like brood horrors. Look at that. They're already gold chevrons. They've effectively, like, way surpassed the mutant rat ogre in terms of uh, chevrons earned in battle already. So that speed. And the regen is nice. They're pretty similar units, though. I'm gonna get more of them very soon. He's gonna go back to Bear Singling Camp, it looks like. Yeah, he doesn't replenish at all. <laughs> Nine turns to totally replenish. Same with these guys. I think we just move. Master Lord of Hellpit. It's 50%, yeah. So let's, uh, we'll take a little bit of attrition here, but maybe force a fight out on the open plain. I could care less if he goes back. I'm not invested in that settlement at all. And I think we get another Lord here and start building up a second army. And then we can do some swapping around. So this will maybe be the bait army. Um, and we get some Warlock Masters too. Ooh, Warlock Engineer, Warlock Master. I think a grace here would be pretty nice. Yeah, ambush success chance. That is great. By the way, warlords can ride brood horrors. That should make them a lot more viable. Bonebreakers have not been a traditionally very good mount. Brood horrors are a hell of a lot better. I would have liked them to go back and rebalance that a little bit more, though. Like, Bonebreakers are such a cool-looking mount, but you just don't use them because they're bad. That's probably worth. You can go back here. I think we're going to get this leveled up one more time. Get that max growth going. Research. We are... Yeah, we're going to have to follow down that skill tree as well. Before we get to the campaign movement range. But public order is decent. Ah, we're not going to go for any of that. Let's go... Take everything menace below. We do have clan rats, so plus 10 armor is not the worst thing in the world. Check the bottom side of this tree. None of that, I would say, is super important at the moment. See, it says I don't have any chance here, but I don't agree, like, at all. I am pretty sure this is no problem. This is less Berserkers than we had last time. Now, there is a Werekin, which is a little bit scary. Um, and there is some casting here, too. What spells? Ooh, that could hurt. He might be a, uh, a target I need to deal with quickly. But, I don't know. With some, some summons, I don't think this is too much of an issue. Let's fight it. Unleash war beasts. Best. Did Queek and Trash get new content? No, I don't think they did. Uh, it's possible they got a little something something that hasn't been announced yet, but I wouldn't go into this DLC with any expectations on that front. Just join the stream. What does the green and circle numbers on the units mean? Okay, so these are the numbers of improvements or modifications in the flesh lab that the unit has access to. So if you get over three, get to three or more, the unit becomes unstable and will degen. And if you get up to five, it turns into a bloated corpse and explodes. Um, it's treated like a bloated corpse. So you run it into melee and then it destroys a bunch of stuff and it's gone forever. So you want to balance improving the units in the flesh lab with a bunch of new stats and abilities 
while also not going overboard with it. Unless you want to and just want to have a bloated corpse stack, which could be hella fun, to be honest. So at the moment, I've focused on the units that aren't going to get phased out of my army, of course. So the monsters, for the most part. Rat ogres have higher weapon strength than they would normally have and higher speed, I believe. Um, this brood horror has... Well, he has a sacred banner of the horned rat, which is super good. For a terror causing monster. But this one has um, a warp lightning rod. So I can summon warp lightning with him whenever I run into melee. Which is pretty effing cool. So we're going to do the same thing we did last time. Very compact formation. Don't give them the wide infantry fight that they want to have. We want to keep it high in sight and grind through them with the regen. In the butt. Watch, watch. In the butt. Take a look at these. What should we call them? Tell you what, chat. We should name these brute horrors now. Give me two names in chat right now that I should name these guys. These cute little naked mole rats. They're adorable. Give me some names and we'll change those around after this battle. Okay, let's get it popping. Yeah, 100 speed on Brood Horrors is scary, man. Like, speed upgrades for them is not horrible. But I'm not sure it's the most important, because at 95 speed, nothing's catching them anyway, and the AI can't handle 95 speed, so I, don't, I think it's kind of a redundant upgrade for them anyway. For some of the other units, maybe it's worth. Speedy Ratzales? <laughs> yeah. Mickey, Jenny, Charles, Seeker, Keeper... Branch and Launch. You know what? Pinky and Brain for the two Brood Horrors ain't bad. An Animaniac just came back. I've not watched it. I've heard great things. I watched some of that growing up on Cartoon Network. I've heard like it has adult themes, but like even a kid can watch it. And they wouldn't get the references and the jokes, but I've heard it's, uh, it's actually pretty good for adults too. It's probably worth watching. Pinky and Brain, I like that. I might go for that. Ron and Rufus. We could go with Scabbers and uh, Crookshanks. The Harry Potter reference. Isn't Crookshanks spelled super weird? Like, Croik? Hermione's a weird girl. That sad feel when Emma Watson's not your girlfriend. Feels bad, man. <laughs> Alright, here we go. We got the mutant rat ogre. We're gonna bait out some shots. There are a decent amount of jav cav on the field. Yeah, we gotta keep this high and tight. Not get overly flanked here. And I wanna get rid of those Norskin ice trolls immediately. Infantry needs to take absorb the charge for it though. Keep them right behind. Keep the brood horrors nearby. Here we go. Uh, they're not spears, so I guess stopping the charge doesn't really matter, but we'll do it anyway. Let's commit everything to killing them ASAP. Yeah, and we can't blow them up too much either, because exactly because of that. That spell's gonna mess me up so bad. And the AI is actually pretty good at using it too. So that probably scares me a little bit here. Right, they melted, that's good. Do not blob. Oh, the, oh, oh, hold up, hold up. You gotta kill that working. Let's give him a, a summon to help out a little bit. Come on back, Brute Horse. Oh, we got plenty of bonus for infantry right there, so that should be fine. But man, yeah, that's gonna be really nasty to deal with. They slowly grind to the center. That's how we do this. Where am I storm vermin at? They're in the front. Okay, that's what I want. And then we can go down to the hero. Um, issue is, yeah, on this side the. Let's come here. 
Yeah, my, my right flank is not going to have fun fighting those Zerkers. They're already mulching me. So, Brood Horns can go help out. Good. Okay. Kill. Kill the Lord. Scabbers, no! Roll you guys back. Maybe shoot at the Marauder Cav. More rat ogres to help out. Kill the trolls. And now we can summon a bunch of these. Hunt the devil on this side. Yes, that's exactly what we need. How the bird horse doing? Doing all right. Doing all right. Where's the caster? I don't see him. Okay. I'm gonna run him down. He's right here. Make sure he does not return. Rat ogres might end up dying. I'd rather they not. Come back. Yeah, screwing him out. Okay. Still doing good on this side. Got a nice little tear route coming in from behind. Yeah, those rat ogres are in big trouble. Get out of there, boys! Nice rear charge. Let's get that Lord dead. Once he's dead, we're good. Yeah, good. Just round off. Just as long as you don't die, we're good. Rest of my army is getting pooped on. No surprise there. Just gotta focus on the the monsters. That Lord is not taking a lot of damage right now. Ooh, this is getting dangerous. All right, I gotta zone out those guys. Yeah, let's let's. Time down. No, no, no. We want them to stay for a second. Yeah. Okay, cool. Those animations are not helping the mutant rat over at all. He's, he keeps leaving the safety of the woods. We're in trouble. We might be in trouble. This is starting to get bad. Yeah, pack master just broke off. No more regen for the mutant rat ogre. Vrat's fine. Brood horrors are... We're gonna have to grind this one out, boys. A lot of cycle charging here. Let's uh, keep all of those together now. I need you guys dead. Oh, Thrott's routing. Woohoo! That might be bad. That might be very bad. Wow, those Zerkers are murdering me. Okay. I think we might be okay as long as Throck can get out of there alive. Keep all the monsters together. And that Skaven leadership is not great. Not great. Packmaster's back. Getting spicy, boys. I am no longer worried about the infantry at all. They can die. It's fine. Just got to keep the monsters and Throck good. All right, so we're going to be able to get all these guys back together and regenning up. Just got to keep them in a block and hope the leadership holds, man. That's pretty much it. The Zerkers are brutal in the early game. No question about it against Skaven. All right. Oh, those are, those are Marauder Champions. Oh, that's so bad. That's really bad. We might. It's possible. It is definitely possible to lose this. It wouldn't be a lost campaign at all. And we can actually get the growth fat back immediately. A bunch of brood horrors and all the units back. So not actually the biggest deal in the world if we lose this. But surprising. Well, maybe not that surprising. Zerkers are just really strong in the early game. We're going to get our whole army together. Okay, they've all rallied. Get rid of these units here. 
They'll be out of ammo soon, and we're regening. And we got terror, so we're gonna just mobilize back on this side and get all of our units together. Avoid them. All right, now you want to charge me, right? Now you want to fight? Yeah. Yeah, balance bar actually says I'm okay here. That doesn't mean we are, but if we get rid of those units... Yeah, you guys need to die soon, though. And we got one more summon as well. Okay. Keep running now. Get out of there. Uh, don't get caught by the berserkers. And don't route infantry. I, if the infantry routes, I might be dead. Oh my god. Wait, Throts? What the hell happened to Throts? Throts! No! Why did I think Thrott was with this group? That's why the leadership is not holding. He must have routed when I had him in a group. He broke off. Alright. Stabilize. You can do this, Thrott. I believe in you. Probably not. I think we lost. Oh, uh, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna use the summon now. I might lose my unit. Might lose my pack master if I don't. Okay, come, come help out. Get the rear charge. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. If I can finish off those Marauder champions, I might be okay. Hold the line, Throt. Be a beast. Okay, pull out immediately, and then we'll use a warp lightning here. Stay alive. Stay alive, pack master. You're good. You're good. Just have to believe, then we can conceive, and then we can achieve. That's huge. Getting rid of that unit is a big deal. Okay, run them down. Do not let them come back. No more range units on the field for the Norskins. And now we can uh, kind of do the regen blob here and help the leadership holds. I think we might be okay. We might be okay. It's just going to be a question of whether the leadership holds or not. Um, I gotta avoid. Ooh, runner hunters are a problem for sure. Is it gonna degen out pretty soon? Swing out to the flank. Those are not okay. Cav, yeah, gotta kill them now. I think we just commit. Send everything in. Maybe keep one brood horror out to uh Yeah, just be careful guys, be careful. Pack master. Master mutator. <laughs> it's a it's a chieftain. Chieftain's the biggest problem. I need to go to him out. If he's dead, if he's dead, I win. If he is dead, I win. If I can't kill him, I'm in big trouble. He routed. Land Mulder, baby! Hold the line! The big Warp Lightning. That's it. <laughs> See, isn't that more fun than just crushing the AI in every battle? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the one big mistake I made there was letting Throt get away from the uh, four-man character blob. I'm not sure how that happened. I think he routed and left the control group. And I just didn't notice it. That could have been game changing. It actually was kind of a blessing in disguise though, because the runner champions chased after them and then we, we gooned them out when they were isolated. So I don't actually think we'll end up losing too many units there. Like I I routed off, but That was that was a really fun battle. <laughs> I like that. Would showing us the NDA be a breach of NDA? Yes. I, I can't show you the embargo information or any of that stuff, no. I mean, I can tell you basically what it is, but it, it's all in a document in Discord, which if I shared would definitely not be cool. <laughs> so no, I cannot do that. Why do you want to see the NDA anyway? Oh, that was fun. I 
thoroughly enjoyed that, and the Molder monsters did exactly what they're supposed to do, which is regen out the ass. And carry me to victory. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, the mutated rat ogres are probably better duelists than the brood horrors, so getting a mutant rat ogre in the growth that would probably not be a bad idea. They're definitely a good unit. And we're done with the dwarfs now, so don't actually have to worry about the magical attacks anymore. Against most factions, it's useful. Just against the dwarfs, it's kind of a detriment. They do not receive penalties from Chaos Corruption. Okay, fair enough. I did not know that. Yeah, so we didn't lose any units. That's good. Hard battle there. Was definitely in their favor from the start. Didn't have to cheese it, just... Let the regen kick in, baby. But yeah, that was a little bit scary. <laughs> scare, scare for enemy things. And for us too, Throt. For us too. Okay, so when we raise stuff, we can get growth vat goodies, which is fun. Could sack it, could raise it. I mean, just loot and occupy for now, I guess. Not really a big deal. Clan Vulcan Tail Slashers. Yeah, Clan Vulcan will be, it'll be uh, Clan Scruton, Clan Vulcan, and whatever clans don't exist yet, and Clan, uh, Clan Rictus as the starting factions in Warhammer 3. So we get more Skaven, perfect. Yeah, public order here sucks. So, in both Kazid, Bordkrag, and Sojak Traken, we'll build some public order buildings. I'm not too worried about uh, recruitment at the moment. Hell Pit will be the main center for that. Loyalty is... Of course we got the low roll there. Alright, well then maybe we do uh, the 13th scheme on turn start. Chance to gain two loyalty. Your auction success chance. Mulder Clanstone. Oh my god. The regen, and not just for monsters, for all Skaven. That's really good. How long does this last for? Thirteen turns. There you go. Makes sense. That's dope. Yeah, that's uh, regen would have made that last battle super easy because it would have kept my infantry in the fight. I probably got a little bit too far away from my lord and hero over on my right flank there, which is why they routed so easily, but We are alive, we are doing well, and we are kicking ass, taking names, and chewing bubblegum, and we are all out of gum What Mulder's all about, baby Upkeep, reduction, one more time, and then two turns from now, go down the remoldered route I guess melee defense for him would not be too bad either, but Once he gets the brood whore, which is very soon actually Won't matter so this will just be nice to have. Ambush defense success chance. <laughs> Twist bend Play claws are almost done. Mammoth's available here. Maybe we go public order to start. Not too worried about building up these provinces actually. All right, so economic base is good. Bunch of play claw catapults on the way. I think Prague and Volksgrad and Kislev is looking pretty juicy right now. It's all habitable climate. Probably where we head. Oh yeah, true. Gotta name them. I think Pinky and Brain. Pinky will be the mad, ridiculous one. And Brain will be the, well, he's the brains of the operation. What do I name my rat ogres and mutant rat ogre? Chat, let me know. Give me some more. I wonder if there are any bonuses you can give artillery. Give my give my play claw catapult some uh some frenzy or something so it doesn't tear her out. Perfect. All right, so this will be my lame ass army that just baits. Masturbates. Definitely gonna switch some play claw catapults into my other army when I come back to help it. Just recruit Skaven Slave Spears for now. 
Public order should be on the come up very soon. And actually, this should be available as well. Four turns. Yeah, public order. Map wide, food, and growth. That'll be nice. Oh, what the hell is Elmira, dude? <laughs> what does that even mean? Rat Mulgers. Big Chungus. Some uninspired names right now, my friends. Very uninspired. Cashier Punishment, Carrot and Stick. Upkeep Reduction and Recruit Rank. For all the monsters of Clan Mulder. Is any of that better? I think I'll do Cashier Punishment and then Tide of Death next. So we'll wait. Mm, you know what? I think I'm going to go through Volskrad to get back home. Still happy with Throg. They don't hate me. Make sure that we're actually on good terms. We should be. Yep. Okay. And we're kind of just chilling right now, man. Like, got our own little corner of Mortal Empire's map. Nice little power base. But Kislev is definitely the next play. Dwayne Warpstone Johnson. <laughs> That's Gorok, man. Ron Cena. That's not horrible. Huh. That grows really fast. We have a Hell Pit Abomination now. I didn't even realize we had already maxed out. All right then. Uh, this army is about to get terrifying, my dude. So I think only disbanding units that have actual bonuses or growth juice used on them will give us back some of that resource. So... It's emerging right here. Oh my god, we have an A-bomb now. And it's, it doesn't even remotely break the bank either, which is super nice. So that'll be my duelist for like Werekin and stuff. Maybe some Brood Horrors and maybe some Rat Ogres. We can definitely afford it. No, oh, that's gonna be a scary army soon. I mean, it's already pretty scary. Three Brood Horrors. Mr. Cool Cats. Buy Prolisec over the counter for Heartburn. It's the only thing that works for me. Yep, I have it. Oh. <coughs> Why'd you bring it up, bro? <coughs> mm. Why'd you bring it up? You cursed me. Thank you. Yeah, I, I've been on a regimen for that. It. This will be a long term. <coughs> One sec. God damn it. Fortune favors the infamous. Some of this is definitely mental, too. Like, you bringing it up literally made me think about it, and then immediately I started gagging again. So, thanks for that. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, I've been on Prilosec for 10 days or so. Or, more like 7 now, actually. Yeah, they said, basically, like, stay on the regimen I'm on for another week, two weeks, and it should hopefully be gone by then. If it's not, might have to do something different, but... Alright, public order. I have been on Prilosec. It has helped. So. Public order. Yeah. Public order in Kazid very soon as well. Looking good, man. Starving. Bob. I, must I don't think I'm going to name him Bob, but thank you for the, uh... For the suggestion. <laughs> Remember, we can only go up to 60 turns. So, I'm not sure if we're going to get that deep in, but I do want to try to get Gorich, if that's a thing. Oh, I do need to recru recruit a uh, World Black Engineer as well. Put in my army. Get that beautiful DOT drain over time. So, I could get more Packmasters too, but Warlock Engineer is the next. So, charge bonus upkeep for... Uh, we might end up using some Clan Scryer stuff, but campaign movement range, if he's embedded in the army, sounds like the go-to play. Stack that up. Mutagen degeneration. So yeah, we should definitely re recruit some stuff in the Flesh Labs. So they already come with the base weapon damage. They already come with some augments. Yeah, melee attack. Those are actually the good ones, too. 
Uh, hell pit. What did my hell pit get? Warp lightning rod. Okay, I think we'll stick with that for now then. Uh, let's see what the upgrades are otherwise. Sample collectors. We could invest in that now. Growth fat recruit rank for all three growth fat units. And that's not too bad. I like the idea of getting more monsters quicker though. So this seems worth. We're going to check everything, our economy. Uh, let's maybe wait a turn or two. We got some more recruiting to do. But yeah, I can actually just move straight on Volskrad now. I think War with Kislev is... Oh, hold up. No, no. God damn it. Yeah, I keep forgetting that underway just lets me avoid attrition completely. Like I said, I'm used to playing other factions. <laughs> we got some Dr. Frankenstein references here. That's perfect. Let the bell scream, scream. More Skaven slaves in that army. That does not have walls, correct? No. Yeah, so we'll move on that next turn. Take everything menace below, then campaign movement range. Don't really care. Not doing that yet. Just frost that out. And there's indeed a Wood Elf hero coming. It's going to be a Glade Captain. And the Great Stag Mount, by the way, bananas. That is what monstrous mounts need to look like in Warhammer 3. Well, all mounts, really. Chaos Deans don't need to be quite that big, but I saw a meme on Reddit that was like, the Chad Great Stag versus the Virgin Chaos Steed. Loyal again. That's nice to know. Yeah, Chaos Steeds right now look like My Little Pony. It's it's kind of embarrassing. I imagine Creator Assembly knows about that whole issue now, and they're going to work on that whenever Chaos gets their rework, but Chaos Steeds should be big, and the Great Stag is looking super manly. I love it. He's got a level two for now. Campaign movement range. Yeah, we're definitely equipping that. Oh my god. Which one is that? Scribe. Okay, so make sure we have that. That is amazing. Perfect. Yeah, stack that up as much as possible, dude. Nystra and Arhan, the Sisters of Twilight, they have some base movement speed or movement on the campaign map movement bonuses that, like, just... They can cover half the map in one turn. It's insane. Not actually, but... It's pretty crazy what they're able to do. I think we go another Taskmaster's platform just to stabilize public order quickly, and then we can delete those after we're good. Um... Wow, that movement range is abysmal. We'll wait for Throck to come to you. Move through Prague, maybe take Fort Ostrosk, and then link those two armies up. You have some trade going, so that's good. One more turn away from Remoldered. Income from post-battle loot, yeah. We could stack that up with looter too. You're in in my optics. Yeah, I'll check the uh, public order and bear sailing camp and stuff. I might end up just raising those to the ground. I've not tried that mechanic yet, but I think it's probably a good plan. I don't need those settlements. They're not really going to help me very much. Okay, so Prague is stacked up. They got plenty of dudes there. That has walls as well. Yeah, it's, it's gonna rebel soon. It's making me a little bit of money. How do I? Like I said, I've not used this mechanic, so is this? A, yeah, abandoned settlement gives me 200 income. I think that's probably worth it, just so I don't have to deal with all that bull crap. I'm gonna do that. Just to try out the mechanic. Like I said, never used it. Kislev? 
I would like it if you wouldn't take my settlement. Sigma forbids this. Sigma, no. Can we hold that out? Doesn't have walls. Not like Probably not unless we force marched over. I'm not gonna do that because I could get whites. It'd be kind of annoying to lose that settlement if that's what happens, but uh tell you what. This might fall soon, so we'll recoup our money for now. Not exactly a pressing change there. Yeah, I won't be able to make it over there in time anyway. Well, that's alright, because we can move on Prague. Yeah, I cannot. I actually can't move out of help it because he would just move in and murder me. We'll have to start the siege and then force march out. All right. Um, EP right here. Gonna drop me a Skaven Slave Slinger. What's my next part? How do I get it? Wait, really? Okay. There's no quest chain for this. That's a little bit lame. All right, then. I mean, I guess with the Gorge quest chain and with, um... The Whip of Domination, it's not really a big deal. But I would have not minded fighting actual quest battles for that. Carrot and stick or brood whore at rank 14. Yeah, for now we're going tie to death. One more summon. Let's go. Oh! What the F? I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> Let's back up. I will definitely need play claw catapults before I do anything like that. Okay. Now, if he wants to come out and fight me on the open plane, I'm down. But yeah, that's uh, that ain't gonna work, player. And actually, if he attacks me right here, it should be a choke point battle, which would be really nice. But yeah, I cannot move this stack out because he would just come in and murder them immediately. Look at the movement range he has, up to right the edge of Hellpit, essentially. All right, Kessler has a problem now. Let's see what they do. Yeah, Underway. We'll use Underway. I know. I know. <laughs> It's still a level one army though, is the problem. They can get intercepted. I, yeah, this this should be this should be very doable, I think. We got slingers, we got night runners, gutter runners, and a bunch of summons. And we got warp lightning, which is the ultimate equalizer. Yeah, the new unit cards are ugly. I don't know what's going on with that. Like, I'm not I'm not trying to hate on whoever made them, but they are lower quality than what we've come to expect from uh, some of the earlier units. Like the Brood Horrors, for instance. I don't I don't know what happened there. Like, it doesn't even really look like the unit itself. Very strange. I have noticed that too. All right, so Pistoliers are going to be very annoying. Uh, let's fight them on the open plain. Let's just let them come to me. Guide us on, Gotcha, runners! Watch, watch! Yes, yes. Watch, watch! Watch, watch! In the bus! Yeah, I don't know if my leadership's gonna hold up particularly well. <laughs> this might be a little bit of an issue. That's why I'm gonna have to blob up a little bit. Got plenty of wins of magic, though. Come to me. Oh, are they... They're not gonna want to move. Actually, that's fine. I can just get my gunner runners out there and shoot them to death. 
Quick, quick! Attack! Globedeers! Skizzle and leap! And we have Clan Mulder Clan Stone. That's going to help tremendously, too. Yeah, I mean, guys, if you want to sit there and trade all day, I'm, I'm down for it. Uh, <laughs> well done. You did it. That should get their asses moving. Yep. They're coming. Move those shields up a little bit further, but don't want to zone them out completely. Look at them to stay there and just get shot to death. Maybe use a clan mold or a clan stone here in the front ranks. Ah, oh, that is good. Turn off skirmish mode. Yeah, it's brutal. Perfect. Uh, we are in crossbow range now, so pull back. Keep my defensive formation intact. Oh, and a Poison Wing Globadier volley coming in. Well, we can afford to take maybe one or two crossbow volleys, but once these are gone, yeah. Now we pull back. Let them come in. And murder them too. Once the swordsmen have committed, I'll summon the Vermintide on top of them, and that will get rid of them for good. Tion horse? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Let's definitely get back now. Control group and push. Now, I do not want to get into a wide formation type battle here like I did against Norska. Definitely want to get blobbed up. Hopefully I can kill that Lord no problem. Nice little volley into the, the swordsman. And remember, there's no minimum cast range now. You can cast as close as you want, which is super fantastic. Another Vermintide summon once the swordsman come a little bit closer. Oh, my infantry just got murdered. That's annoying. The clan rounds are not the most reliable. That's for sure. And the war planning coming down right now, baby. Let's go. Put you on guard mode so you don't fight him in melee. Keep shooting the swordsman. Yeah, we're fine. We got this. Bang, bang. On, on, 
All right, simple enough. So defend that. That's probably one of Kislev's three armies. I would guess there's one kind of closer to the heart of Kislev, and then there's the one in Prague. So with that army dead, defended the home settlements, which is good, and we can move on towards uh, Prague itself. Try to bait that army out, hopefully. Is there another Skaven hero coming? Uh, yeah, Chieftain has been announced, but not shown off yet, and we can't show it off. So I actually have it on Tech to my DLC right now. I, I don't know... I'm just not gonna talk about it. <laughs> it's been announced, that's all. Not gonna talk about it, certainly can't show it. That's it. <laughs> Very few losses there too. Yes, yes. Too many slaves to feed. So I imagine some of you guys have seen Sisters campaign as well. I imagine some of you guys have both streams open. I know Legend is doing Sisters for the first 20 turns guide. I don't know if he's gonna stream more today. And I'm sure there are other content creators too. Which campaign is looking more appealing to you at the moment? Are you guys feeling threat? Are you guys feeling the sisters? Mercy, yes, yes. One thing I really wish Creative Assembly would do. Yes, more slaves. For take me. food. Um, uh, yeah. More slaves, uh, actually, that's a decent amount of more power. money. Uh, I really wish they would treat elf models differently. There are two. There are two things that I kind of have an issue with the way they handle models right now, and it can obviously be excused because of the insane unit variety and mass amount of content we have in Mortal Empires, which it truly is. It's unparalleled in strategy games. There's never been a game like this ever. Unparalleled in scope, which is really cool. I love to, I'm super glad I'm a part of it. But I think that their costume and model design for certain lords and heroes and units is way too conservative. So for example, if you look in the High Elves army book, uh, at a picture of a High Elf, no, not Noble, uh, Prince, for example. High Elf Prince. They are covered in heraldry. They've got amazing armor and helmets and weapon sets that just look incredibly cool. And then you look at a generic lord in Total Warhammer 2, and a lot of them are pretty boring looking, honestly, compared to the artwork. High Elf Princes are a perfect example. They're kind of boring looking. They're kind of plain. They don't have a whole lot going on. So if you compare the army book artwork, which obviously it's easier to draw something really cool than actually model it yourself, um, there's a pretty big discrepancy there. The other issue I have with the way Creator Assembly does elves, and it's an issue I have with Nystra and Arahan, they don't look that elvish. Like, their build type and their visuals don't scream elf to me other than the pointy ears. I don't think they're bad models at all, but... If you look at the artwork for Nystra and Arahan, they're very- they're almost willowy, they're wispy, they're very thin, and they- they seem like a character that would probably weigh like a hundred pounds. But what makes them scary is that they're skinny as hell, but they're actually a centuries-old warrior that isn't 15 years old, they're 300, and they could kill you with the blink of an eye. So I feel like you lose some of their character characterization and what makes them unique and special by giving them a human-like build. And it's true for almost all the elves in Warhammer 2. They don't really look like elves. They're supposed to be tall, willowy, wispy, very thin, kind of unnatural looking to a human being. And instead they just kind of have like a human skeleton and human-like faces. The Nystra and Arhan, for example, they kind of have human faces, right? They have that square, square face. They're not unattractive, but they don't look very elvish. And I think that's something that I wish CA would put a little bit more time fixing on, you know? Alright, so I could underway past this. Actually, I don't even really have to do that. Just march over here. If you want to take Volkskrad, that's fine. Uh, you know what? He is going to get Volkskrad back. I want him out of Volkskrad. I don't want to fight Prague while it's like that. So, if you want to take Volkskrad, that's cool. I'm going to cancel this. We're going to move you over here. Don't need to use underway in that standpoint. Um, let's switch. What do I pull out? Definitely want all four play claws in the army. Don't want to get rid of all my infantry. That's kind of an issue, but at the same time, play claws make it... 
Not that big a deal. Move, move when more sleep high. And that's a pretty strong snack right there for relatively early in the campaign. And yeah, that growth fat is just popping off right now, my lord. Okay, so what we could do is keep them in ambush stance outside Prague. Although he's gonna go to Volstrad, so it's not gonna matter. We'll keep those armies together and uh, mow him down in a second here. Upgrade those walls to protect my flank. Why did I? I didn't delete that building, I didn't think. I thought I just canceled the uh, second tier of it. That's weird. Okay, whatever. Um, Hell Pit should have, yeah, some nice recruitment stuff. But I don't need any more right now. Alright. Next turn. Yeah. I'm gonna use that that slave army as bait and then ambush dance with Throt right next to it. But, again, I'm not sure it's gonna matter because he's gonna move on Volskrad this turn, I think. So once Volskrad falls, the army will already be, I can take it, because I don't have to deal with the garrison at the same time. Wow, he didn't take that. That's so weird. Does he not have enough movement points for it or something? What are you doing? Do you have a mammoth? Hello. Why are you here? What are you doing? We're not at war. We got a non-aggression pact. Is he trying to gobble up this territory right here? You should honestly not even know it exists. That's probably what he's doing. Kind of dumb. Okay. All hail, horned rat. Scamper scurry. Dreaded one. Um, ambush dance is 25%, so as long as I have 25%, I'm good. Seek specimens and parts and organs. Maybe force march them behind just in case that matters. Let the bell scream, scream. Yeah, public order is still an issue here. Yeah, I don't think I don't remember deleting that building. That's kind of weird. I guess it was just level one. Okay, um, frozen landing, all that stuff's good. So I'll try tracking, level up any buildings we can. Ooh, I could get storm vermin soon. That as a front line with these monster builds would be pretty beneficial. Just have high melee defense. Probably more useful than plague monks, actually. But plague sensor bears against chaos, if that time comes, will be amazing. Venice below. We're gonna hold on to a little bit of money, cash on this turn. I don't need to. Recruit anything at the moment. Hope the sandwich works. Yeah, the AI definitely does see through Fog of War, no question about it. So that is probably where he's headed, would be my guess. Do it, Kislev. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's really OP. <laughs> yeah, we'll just auto-resolve that. Time to feed a feast. Take the money. Move on, Prague. Got glittering scales now, too. Okay, so Throt has this. That's going to help tremendously in those grinded out fights we've been fighting so far. Growth Vat is available. We can get some more Rat Ogre soon. I got an A-bomb in my army, that's so badass. Instead of waiting 70 turns to get one of those, you just get it at turn 20. With four play claws, I think this should be a pretty easy fight. Hate sieges, but we're gonna play one. Let's do it. You think it's weird that Stormfront with Sword and Shield have more base melee defense over their Halberd variant? 
well, that's that's typically how sword and board works in this game. Halberds aren't actually really known for their melee defense. I'm pretty sure. Um, I actually think regular chosen. Yeah, regular chosen are definitely a tankier option as composed to their halberd compatriots, which makes sense, right? Like, if you're gonna go sword and shield or sword and axe or whatever, you're trying to get something that holds a line. Whereas halberds already have the armor piercing and bonus for large benefits. So you gotta do something that makes it more appealing to get the sword and board stuff, which is why those have been split up. I think those unit archetypes make plenty of sense. Um, what's, oh my, this map sucks. We'll do that, we'll go to this side. The projectile change. Well, actually, I can't talk about that yet. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that yet. I don't know what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not going to, so I'm just not going to say anything. Alright, so this is just going to be the nastiest little monster blob you've ever seen in your life. Let's put a hell pin in the middle of it, too. I mean, this is just... This is getting comical at this point. The rat ogres might not have such a great time, but everything else will. Um, make sure the play claws are in a good spot. Maybe put them here. There's a bunch of regenerating monsters out front, so it doesn't matter. Bunch of sword and board. And hell, you can join the party too. Those cannonballs? Yeah, but not massive damage on the way in at the moment. Should be able to kill those two towers quick and then we can focus on the walls. Not incredibly impressive damage. Ooh, that hurt. Maybe let's hide the storm vermin. Okay, so it should be two more sets of volleys and they're dead. A lot of skirmish range. Ah, the storm vermin got messed up. Not worried about the clan rats at all, but let's have you guys just come in and be blobbers for me not too worried about it and maybe heal you with the clan mold or clan stone make sure we get at least some holes in the walls boop 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 oh did they talk about it okay good well, if they talked about it then i can talk about it uh yeah so I don't know if they saw the video or they just heard people talk about it in the Discord or whatever, but they've said that they will make artillery no longer able to shoot through trees, which is a good change, 100%. And they are also going to change the projectile rules so that anything that has fast speed, like a handgun or gunpowder, will have half the grace period that an arrow or something slower does. So... You'll still be able to fire through trees with handguns and that kind of thing, but you'll have a much smaller grace period to do it. Which is exactly, I think, the right way to handle it. Uh, it was going to be very abusable with artillery, and it sounds like it's a pretty easy change, so... Good on CA for listening on that front. Let's go, boys! Oh my god. Maybe we shouldn't blob up quite that much. Alright, turn fire at Will off for now and maybe we can get them in a position where uh ah, just blow that up, it doesn't matter.
Yeah, I would not mind if CA added a longer grace period for the Wood Elves. It does seem pretty logical, I think. Spears. Hell, they might do that. If you guys leave your feedback, they might might agree. They listen to uh, everything we talked about in that one video. A warp lightning helmet abomination. Is that not just the most badass thing ever? My lord. The mutant rat ogre too. And a bunch of brood horns vomiting on everybody. Oh my lord. It's getting gross up in here. It's getting nasty. Should have maybe used it on this side. All right, let's send them some bro brood horrors and rat ogres to help out. Looks like they need some help. I have you sitting all the way back. Your warp lightning would have been useful. Air route's imminent. Mm. Well, those Empire Knights are a problem. So let's deal with the Halberds first, and then we can swarm them more. Push right through, get rid of those halberds. So now we got brood horrors kind of isolated. Don't want the rat ogres to get swarmed too bad. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Maybe get some of these too. Man, Clan Molder is insane. In the membrane, they are just killing the game right now. Yeah, one more vermin sign in the back. Like, look at the summons we can pop out. Like, I'm seriously just pooping them out left and right. Back from the crabs. Now we're gonna find out which one of y'all gonna toss my salad. Dude just used a warp stone drill to eviscerate his opposition. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. He's gonna punch him. Oh. There's a guy in that hand. We got sink kills. We got mass routes. It feels good. Alright, come on in, Mr. Clan Scroot and Grace here. Let's warp lightning on top of that. Get another warp lightning from you. Looks like we are going to win on this side, but took some losses, no biggie. Double fast forward it, think we got it. I don't know, would you guys consider that uh, that ambush trick cheese? And, and that seems like a, abuse of AI, but at the same time, Made our conquest of Kislev a hell of a lot easier, so. I I personally don't have any issues using it. I just don't want to make an entire campaign playthrough using it. There is a difference. Min-max has never really been my playstyle. That's that's Legends Forte, that's not me. <laughs> but I will I will do stuff like that to get a little bit of an advantage there. And that certainly did not hurt. Made that auto resolve super easy. Our food is fantastic. Our economy is also starting to pop off too. Maybe we'll level this up. Maybe just two for now. Valid military strategy. Yeah, but the thing is. Yeah, so that one in particular, like, yeah, you're leaving an army out as bait, that gets used all the time. 19 stacks of Stegodons, maybe a little bit more abusive. <laughs> maybe. 
It, it was surprising to me. There were a few people that said with the change to uh, mass and being able to pull out of en en enemy infantry formations and and the change to dueling for footlords. There were a couple people that said like, yeah, footlords are now going to be the best duelists. Monsters are going to be trash now because they can't pull away from engagements because they don't have enough mass to do so. Just kind of like... You've been paying attention for the last two or three years, right? Like, single entity monsters in Warhammer 2 are the best type of unit in the game, bar none. No questions asked. There's a reason they comprise the Doom stacks for like 90% of the factions in the game. I must eat feed. <sighs> so I do not think monsters are suddenly gonna be in a bad position after all this. I think they're they're still gonna be quite strong. We're rocking a full stack of them right now, and they're uh they're clearing out my little corner of Mortal Empires map, so I think they'll be alright. Remoldered is incredibly good. Invocation to hack single target for monsters, and we have plenty of those. Hero Casher. Packmasters are actually a good example of what I was talking about a little bit ago as well. Like, their model's not bad, but it definitely lacks some of the flavor and freakiness of what you'll see in Vermintide. Now, to be fair, Vermintide has one faction to focus on, the Skaven. So, you better get it right in that standpoint. But, like, I do love the models for Storm Vermin and Packmasters and Gutter Runners and a few other things quite a bit more in Vermintide than I do how they were introduced in, uh, in Warhammer 2. Replenish troops. Wait, what does that mean? Unlocks hero action, replenish troops. Like, is that a... I would assume that's a passive one. I'm going to use it and see what happens. Increase by an additional 10%. Okay, yeah. That's big. That's actually huge. We want that. We want to stack that up as much as possible. That'll be an extra 5% right now. Uh, Mr. Clan Scruton, man, going back to Hell Pit. Kazid, Boris Krag, doing good. Crack a track. Public order is stabilized for now, but need to increase that. Get some Storm Vermin, too. Definitely increase mobility. Yeah, there's a lot of movement range stacking we can do here. Overcast Warp Lightning, always good. I think growth is the play. Thanks for my plan. Victory. I believe it is for your own army. Looking at the, the uh, level two of that talent, it says increase casualty replenishment in your army by 10%. So I would imagine the first one is 5% for your own. Okay. Nice and stabilized. Got a bunch of more monsters on the way, which we're just going to end up not being able to afford. So what I think happens is you end up getting a bunch of them and then you trash them. <coughs> mm -mm -mm. And use that mutagen to increase your uh, flesh lab, which we haven't really done yet. We haven't really messed with the... Uh, the laboratory itself. I think that'll be next on the agenda because we don't need many more monsters at this point. It's a very good army that we can kind of cut the heart out of Kislev with. In fact, if we maybe wait one or two more turns. And should I at all? Maybe stabilize public order. Yeah, actually, no, I can, I can stabilize public order with this. Help it. What's the garrison like here? Really good. Two help and abominations, play claws. Okay, so I'm not too worried about an, a stack coming in to kill them off. And we can force march back anyway. I think... Cross over to Kislev. Take that. Stabilize public order in Prague. Man! Noxious. I love mods that just get rid of walls, man. It'd be so much better. This game would be more fun if you just played straight up land battles every single time. Cannot wait for that siege rework in Warhammer 3. How they're going to do that... For every single siege map and every single faction in the game that's already in Mortal Empires, I have no idea, but it needs to happen. Uh, I guess we don't really need summons. 
At last, flesh. What do I think about the outpost nerf for the Wood Elves? I think it makes a lot of sense considering the way they play now and the fact that they can now have eight home bases or so instead of one. So Athalorn isn't just going to be the only location. Like I said, I have not played Legendary. I've only played hard and very hard with the sisters. And for both of those, I... Like, yeah, you end up in mid, late, and late game, you end up with less armies than a lot of other factions. But that fits with the Azrai playstyle, right? Like, I don't want every faction to play the same. And what I think it's kind of conducive to is a situation where you end up having a, a slow early game, which has kind of always been the case for the Wood Elves. Your mid game explodes. Uh, you get a lot of settlements really quick because for example, if I beat one Heart of Orion or Heart of the Jungle battle against the Bowmen of or Orion, I immediately confederate them. And if I confederate them at the right time, I'm getting a tier five settlement immediately with all the buildings built. I don't have to invest anything to build those buildings. It's already good to go. Barring like maybe deleting one and changing one or two things. That settlement is already good to go. I'm getting that at like turn 50 because the AI is really good at leveling up settlements. So getting a tier five settlement at what, like turn 50, turn 60. You can do that in Griffin Wood. You can do that in the Heart of Darkness. You can do that in Athalorn with, with Torgavon and the other minor Wood Elf settlements or factions. And suddenly by turn 70, you have eight super nice, really powerful settlements that you, that become your home base, that you use as your stronghold to strike out into the Wildwood. So if you have all those bases, your economy is going to be okay for turn 70. Like it's not going to be bad at all. You can afford some really nice units. You can afford some nice armies. And then you just hop from continent to continent fighting a really wide variety of factions. And that's exactly what's happened in my playstyles with the sisters so far, my playthroughs with them. You just get really nice variety. Playing as the sisters, playing as Orion, playing as Durthu. And it's fun. Like, it's a, a unique playstyle that's kind of unlike anything we have in the game right now. So, like I said, I can't speak to how the economy ends up working in the late game on Legendary, but that's not what they're balancing for, right? Like, they want to be balancing for the people who are playing hard, very hard, normal. Legendary is meant to be a challenge. And it fits their playstyle from a lore perspective, too. Because... They strike out from the wild hunt from the woods. They don't want to conquer the map and paint it your color. That's not what they do. So I personally didn't mind the old outposts. Being able to stack Waywatchers up to like 250 missile damage or whatever is cool. No question about it, but... It was busted and it makes sense that they might want to change that around a little bit. Let's just go right in, honestly. Uh, help in Abomination 2. We can just go to the gate. Play Claws can deal with the, uh, uh, let's kill the towers. What are my PC specs? Right now, I'm rocking an i9-9900KF. Ow. Ow, there are handguns up there too. Oh, It's a little bit painful. Uh, 9900 KF, I9, uh, 980 Ti, which will hopefully be upgraded to a 3080 very soon. Which should make streaming in 1440p a reality for you guys, which you should quite enjoy. And uh, two SSDs and a couple other things. It's not a top of the line system anymore. When I get the new GPU, it should mostly be, yeah. Did they fix the gate bug? That hasn't happened to me since I played on this patch. Wouldn't that be fantastic? A real dream come true. What do you think, guys? Did they fix that? It didn't happen right there. Uh, let's shoot the knights or the outriders. 
Actually, no, let's shoot the, uh, the handguns. Oh, this is gonna get so mean so fast. <laughs> oh, it's just not even fair, dude. So messed up. I feel kind of bad. They did not fix the gate bug. Okay, I'm sad. Have you seen it on another stream, or did it happen during this playthrough? Or did it happen on can on CA stream? That would be hilarious. Yeah, so the gate bug, if you've never seen it before, most of us have experienced it. It's essentially, you run towards the gate, the gate's open to let you in for some reason. They shouldn't ever. But it's essentially because the AI likes to put units right here, the gates will open. Your own units will go through the gap and then get stuck because the gate will close behind and will not open again. So it's like a, a master bait from the AI and they basically say like, you know what? Come on in. And then they uh, kill off your important squishy lords and single entities who are beating on the gate. It's not supposed to happen. It's a bug. But yeah, it's very annoying. And apparently not fixed. Feels bad. Great swords can't handle. I'm gonna remolder one of my rat ogres. Kill off that lord and then it should be mass route city. Let's just stop shooting with the play claws. Oh my god, this is just... I mean, this is pretty brutal. Like, we're already kind of on our way to Doomstack territory with an army like this. Brood Horror Doomstacks. On day one. Here we go. <laughs> it's so messed up, man. Oh my god. I love it. Game seems to be running smooth for you. Can you tell me what your specs are? Yeah, just just talked about my specs. It's i9 9900 KF uh, 980 Ti, which is frankly not good enough to run Warhammer 2 smoothly. Um, yeah, it's like decent on stream and stuff, but we're not talking smooth 80 FPS like I get in all my other games. Total War graphical fidelity is decent, but in terms of actual optimization, not very impressive when you're zoomed in. Which, to be fair, there aren't a lot of games like it. There aren't a lot of games where you're fighting with detailed models and up to 10,000 models on screen. Generally speaking, it's more like 2,500, 3,000, but still. Would like some more battle optimization improvements for Warhammer 3, no question about it. Because even now with my system, like I'll get, I'll drop to 45 FPS occasionally when I'm zoomed in. Is not my favorite thing in the world. Big scare scare for enemy things. Big scare scare for enemy things indeed. Got our teeth breakers and Ishka's triads. Twist bend mangle experiment. Master Lord of Hell Pigs. Does anyone want to trade with me? Anyone want to be want to be my friend? I still don't have anyone even. I still don't know any factions yet. Bone Rallas, Kislev, Varg, and Wintertooth is it. I wonder what Wolfric's doing. Alright, here we go. Oh my god, that is so good. What the F? Casualty Replenishment, Growth Juice, Monster Throttler, Ravening Hunger, Perfect Vigor, and then Missile Strength and Melee Defense for all of my monsters. Well, Casualty Replenishment is already pretty good, but that'll be what we go for next. Actually, Brood Horror is next, and then we can go for Specimen Collector, but for now... Well, hold on, let's see. Yeah, melee defense for all my monsters is so good. Let's do that. Oh, Alright. Brood Horror for you next turn as well. Upkeep reduction for all of them. Sounds pretty good.
Yeah, replenish troops. Action. Replenishment rate is increased by an additional 10%. But I like upkeep reduction too. I actually haven't confirmed that that's actually conferred to my army. I don't know what it would be otherwise, though. I don't think there's a manual improve casualty replenishment. It's always just passive, so it might be something else. Um. Okay, public order finally starting to stabilize. Death Frenzy on the blobs here are going to be brutally effective. Will AP Wolfrath be available in MP? Yes. They are called... I don't know if they have a diff, different name just besides Wolfrats. I don't know if it says Warpstone Teeth on them, but that is what they are. It's a special rule straight from the tabletop. And they are an AP. Both them and the uh, Pox Rats. The Poison Rats that have better stats. But we'll have another Brood Horror Cluster very soon. Get rid of the... You are almost, like, guaranteed to Doomstack with this army. It's actually really interesting. It, it kind of forces you into Doomstacks, honestly. Because of how available these monsters are. And you don't want to be just stacking it up in all your other armies as well. Because the upkeep will bankrupt you quickly. But for Throt's army, like, you are very much encouraged to go full Mutant Rat Ogre. We'll get some more mutant rat augers in a second here. Kiss love. Yeah, the, the doom stacks with this guy are gonna be legit, man. 100%. Maybe I should get some uh, assassins going. And then delete that building afterwards. Uh, cunning. Ambush success chance, local armies. I'm not gonna be using him in battle. He'll be my uh, like, actual assassin. So I guess that's the only one that helps me on the map itself. Upkeep is a little bit high there, but... Alchemist Mark. Someone to deal with all these heroes might be pretty helpful. Let me make sure I've not missed anything. What is the one unit you guys are most hyped for in this DLC? Like, what what is looking most attractive to you at this point? I think Great Stags are probably going to be the unit I want to show off the most. But I don't know if they're going to be a, a faction-wide game changer for the Wood Elves. I think Zotes are actually the unit that will plug more holes for the Azrai that they were really lacking. And it kind of makes sense because they actually don't aesthetically look like they belong at all. But they're Dragon Ogres, man. Dragon Ogres with magical attacks. Think about how effective that's going to be against a faction like Bretonia. Will it be enough to make that Azrai favored? Maybe not. But it's going to make that a much more viable, or at least much more competitive matchup, I think. Great Stag, yeah. I think a lot of people are on board with that. It's just such a cool mount. It's a good addition for sure. I wasn't expecting a monstrous cab unit. For the Wood Elves. And anytime CA adds more monstrous cab, I am super, super on board. Okay, so things are going decent. I didn't actually realize my fashion color is yellow. I'm aware my hero is not moved, but we are not going to keep that on because it's going to get annoying quick. Do some scouting. <laughs> Maybe kill off that captain next turn. Um, Zavastra and Fort Jakova. And that'll put me right on the border of Red Eye Mountain and their gold mine. Nine hundred plus. What am I at right now? Yeah, we'll wait one more turn for that. It should be... Let's see. They don't make this very readable. Kind of annoying. Okay, um... I think we can just go on... 
Fort Jakova for now. I don't need Night Runners. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to end up using many of these units at all. I might just delete this building. Hero capacity. Yeah, I, I don't really need it. Let the bell scream, scream. 93 speed. Yes, indeed, man. It's going to be a, a doom stack of 90, 95 speed brood horrors. It's pretty disgusting. We already pretty much have it. Do I go Jakova or Zavastra? I think I go Jakova because I... No, there's nothing in Zavastra, I know. Take that, then force march back. Stabilize public order in Prague. Level you up. Loyalty is good for you, right? Yeah, eight. How are we doing on money? Yeah. Food and public order, always nice. Clan Ashen will remember that. <laughs> yeah. Give me one second. We got any Merkins in the chat? You guys have some plans for Thanksgiving? I think Covizi's not gonna help people in terms of their travel plans. I think most people are probably gonna stay inside and do their own thing with immediate family members, but which I'm a little bit sad about because I have family in uh, San Diego and Coronado that I'd love to see. We haven't seen them in a while, but a bunch of them are like 70 plus and not really worth risking any kind of pandemic shenanigans going on with that. So we're gonna do Thanksgiving with immediate family at my house. But we hate, dude, like my sister and I, I'm, I'm sure many of you guys are aware, I have a twin sister. There's a there's a girl, Indie Pride from Milk and Cookies Total War. Um, she hates traditional Thanksgiving food and I don't hate it, but I don't like it. I'm not a big fan of turkey. I'm not a fan of the stuffing. I'm not a fan of mashed potatoes. I'm not a fan of the cranberry whatevers. We're not doing that. So usually we'll do something a little bit more uh, fancy if we can. So for example, uh, king crab is one thing we've always loved having growing up, like for special occasions. Just big juicy crab legs. You crack it open and just Tons of meat pours out, you dip it in butter sauce, it's pretty dank. Might do something like that. I actually don't know what's on the menu for tomorrow. That's gonna be fun. Um, but yeah, we're gonna avoid the Thanksgiving, the, the turkey. Turkey is one of those things that on paper should be amazing, but it always just comes out disappointing. My favorite birthday meal growing up was watermelon, ravioli, and king crab legs. That was the go-to. Unsub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel you, dude. I know, a lot of people get really, get really worked up about Thanksgiving dinner. They love that traditional stuff. I, I, I feel you. It's just not my thing. It's just not my thing, dude. Do we got a third army here going real soon? Actually, no, we're gonna pop that mutant rat ogre cluster. Two mutant rat ogres and a bunch of mutagens. So let's actually use that this time. We should be in good shape to buy something from the flesh lab. All right, sample collectors, growth juice. Like it's almost overkill how many units you get. 
We've gotten 15 top tier monsters and it's 28 turns into the playthrough. Kind of obscene. Like, I don't even see the point in getting the growth juice buffed. Like, is there an actual point to that? Considering how fast it goes already? There, there's probably ways to game this flesh lab that I'm not utilizing would be my guess, but none of this seems incredibly necessary. Once I, un after claiming four growth bat batches. Okay, so I've gotten three out of four. And that'll unlock the rest of these good ones. Okay. I'm not going to be recruiting Skaven slaves anymore, so that's, uh, this one is good, I guess. What this bit do? <laughs> Recruit rank for all my monsters. <laughs> yeah, they, they barely cost anything, too. Dude, this, this lab is insane. And we got Brood Horrors now. Like, campaign's over. You, don't, you guys don't need to watch anymore. We won. <laughs> it's over, boys. Got a legit Doom Stack at turn 33. I love CA, but I'm not sure their campaign balance is the best. <laughs> Oh my god, man. It's fitting. It works. Yeah, that, I'm, I'm just kind of... Let's, let's give them some upgrades, right? Like, that's, that's kind of... Actually, they have some. Vanguard. Keeping track of all these now is going to be impossible. Yeah, I don't want to make them all degen. Honestly, I kind of like it when they stick at one. Absolutely bananas. Yeah, they may not be Ick at Claw level, but that's that's kind of a weird baseline to compare it to, right? I, it's a fair comparison because it's also Legendary Lord that came in a DLC for the Skaven. But, like, what the hell, man? Ick at Claw can't Doomstack like this this early. No, I, I think Ikit is probably stronger. Oh, we've got a... We're next to Morgheim. Red Eye Mountain could be next on the agenda. Uh, but we'll, we'll focus on Kislev. I'm not worried about Fort Jakova. I'm not even going to invest in it. Fort March back to Kislev. Finish off Zavrasta. And honestly, I could probably throw some, some monsters in the second army now. Maybe start utilizing them. But keeping it public order is good. Storm Vermin could be recruited soon, too. Zavrasta and then Fort Astrosk. I think that might be... And then Aringrad. With those three, I think uh, Kislev's fallen. I've fallen and I can't get up. Yeah, it is hard to beat literal nukes that start on turn one. I, uh... I was actually trying to do some cool walkthroughs for... Um, Kataf Southern Realms. Like, Border Prince is that, not DLC, but mod that adds some of those new factions. Dogs of War, all that. I was trying to fight Ikit Claw on turn two and take Skaven Blight on turn two with Talea and Borgia the Besieger. And you actually just can't do it. It's, it's not truly impossible. I think there might be a way to game it, but I tried a lot of different things. And... It's brutal because one, your infantry as the Dogs of War or Talea or Estalia, it's just bad in the start of the campaign. It's just bad. It actually loses to clan rats on harder difficulties. But more than that, you get nuked. So immediately straight from the word go, at least one of your units is deleted and you can't dodge it. It's just going to die. And then Ikit Claw has the Doom Sphere thing that he can pop, the Vortex. He has Warp Lightning, which the AI is stupid good at using. Oh, look at our movement range right now. That's so good. Yeah, AI is mean with Warp Lightning. Like, really mean. Is my assassin dead? Where did he go? 
Okay. I was like, where is he? <laughs> Let's move up to Fortis Charles and see what's going on. Sneak, scary. Yeah, it gets warp lightning will just savage you. It'll it'll delete your armies. If you're fighting on quote unquote equal footing on turn two trying to take Scave and Blight. And obviously it's not equal because you'll have the garrison and he has a bunch of other stuff. So I tried to I tried to do something fun there and it really is one of those starts with Talea and Borgia where you just you're just supposed to turtle a bit, get an army that can actually take it in a normal time frame. And frankly, you don't even start a war with Scaven Blight or with Ike Claw, so it's it's not something you have to do. How do I distinguish the twins? Do I have a source? Okay, so I don't know if you guys noticed it, but when I played that cutscene at the start of the stream, it showed Nystra and Arahan, and Unlike in-game, where Arahan, the white-haired one, has makeup and looks nice, she does not look nice in that cutscene. She looks pretty crazed, pretty evil. So, I think that made it clear-cut. In terms of knowing who's who in-game, I've not gotten a confirmation from Creative Assembly, but we know what it is in the lore, and at this point, I... I'm prepared to give CA the benefit of the doubt and have them just be like, yeah, they got it right. It's it's Arahan is white hair, she is evil and mean. Nystra is nice and black hair and not wearing makeup in game. <laughs> is how they handled it. Which fits the lore and it fits what's in the art for the 8th edition Wood Elves army book. One second. Alright, um... I'm gonna move on to Vastra here. Occupy... Public order not so happy in Kislev, but that's just because we just took a settlement. So yeah, Zavastra is under my command. New little buddy here. Let's fight a big battle against somebody. What do you guys think? With the, with the Doom Stack, let's unleash it on the world. Definitely growth. Listen to me, me. <laughs> what experiment? Income from po po post, post battle loot. <laughs> Catch your punishment and growth juice. I mean, those are all things we really want. And now we got the brood horrors too. The unclean one. Wow. Yeah, it's going to give us a second rat ogre summon. 10% ward save. And cooldown reduction too. Dude, his skill tree is pretty bananas. Could go renowned and feared as well. I think we'll go for this first. And then renowned and feared. The blue line is also always good. I wouldn't mind seeing a bit more faction-specific blue lines in Warhammer 3, too. A little bit boring that the vast majority of the races have the exact same ones. Alright. Fort Stragov is a problem. They've got a full stack of Outriders. Sertha Ek is jerking off, doing his own thing. I just sold you eight ball of crack. Packmaster's leveled up as well. Now the HP is actually super good for a mount like Brood Horrors. But I think we'll go for that right now. Maybe Missile Resist next. And cut the heart out of Kislev. They've got three more settlements. Finally. Got the campaign movement range stacked up. Food capacity and food generation is always nice. Who's more to fun to play? Sisters or Drycha? Well, I can't actually talk about Drycha campaign, but to be fair... Well, I guess I can talk about whatever's been revealed so far. I've not played Drycha in any way, shape, or form. Not touched her. Might do a stream with her coming this weekend. Nothing confirmed on that front yet. But she's not actually allowed to be played yet in terms of the embargoes. But, 
she is quite different than the other Wood Elves. So I can't speak to her unique campaign mechanics other than what you guys already know, which is that she can recruit monsters of the forest, essentially. So hawks, eagles, those kind of spiders, anything from the deep wood. She cannot recruit a lot of elves at the start. I believe she can get access to them through certain moves you can do, but you don't start with them. And I mean, from that standpoint alone, you're not using a lot of the new DLC units because a lot of them are wood elves focused. So you're much more about the trees. And it makes sense because Drycha hates wood elves. She is kind of like Orc in the Black in the way that he's a, a Tomb King. She is kind of a... I mean, she's part of the Wood Elves faction, but doesn't like the race itself. Which is exactly what Ark in the Black is like. He's not, in reality, a true Tomb King. He's from Nehakara, but he serves Nagash. And he wasn't a king of old. Alright, uh, do I stabilize public order here? Do I just go? I think I just rip it out of him. You can make some public order buildings in these settlements. Don't see the point in waiting. We're ready to fight. Nice stabilizing public order there. Your recruit rank, that's really not that beneficial to be honest, but this is. Yeah, that's the thing. From a from a pure campaign perspective, I would I'm not going out on a limb when I say this at all. Sisters absolutely crap on Drycha in terms of overall power. I mean, Drycha can summon Dryads, which is really cool. She can have Coetel, which helps a lot because he's scary. He's Beast, Dark, and some other lore of magic, I believe. Um, and he's got like Armor Sundering, Bonus for Large, huge AP value, great stat line, beats the crap out of Durthu in a 1v1 fight. But yeah, I mean... The sisters are way stronger on Seth and Har on their forest dragon. They're honestly pretty terrifying. Bonus experience for mechanic here. We pay a little bit of money. We get this. Untainted. Uh, no. I will ensure loyalty. Really? Really? Balance bars in vanilla. No fun in sieges. All right, fair enough. If you make me fight it, I'll fight it. There is no pack master lord. No, it is just heroes. And frankly, I think getting more than a couple of them in an army would probably be a little bit redundant. I think maybe having two or three would be fine, but past that, I don't really see the point. They won't stack. I think we have to kind of set up over on the left side. This time we don't really have infantry, so regenerating monsters will be the front line. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Literally the Storm Vermin with Frenzy are the only unit I have left. They can tank cannonball shots for me. Let's take a look at this Twisted Menagerie, boys. Menagerie, I guess, is what people say. I say Menagerie because it sounds like lingerie, it's fun to say. Alright, we got two Brood Horrors. Well, five now. Two mounted for Throt and for the Packmaster. A bunch of Rat Ogres, Hell Pit Abomination. Two Mutant... No, three Mutant Rat Ogres now. Like... And they're all Gold Chevron, too. Look at that stat line. 50-50, almost. Brutal. Very entertaining. Oh, we're missing... We're missing Pinky. Come over here, buddy.
kill the towers first. Oh, they're so beautiful. My abominations. They're so gorgeous. I have not seen anything about Gorich yet. We need to figure that out, man. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I would have thought that quest line would have already popped by now. I'll check my quest lines after this battle and see. I don't think I've gotten any messages about it. How long will that gate last? Not very. Pinky took some damage. Maybe get rid of the halberds at the start? Oh, they're already through. Is that gate bug? Yep. Oh, but I can still attack it at least. That's death frenzy for everybody. 82 melee attack now. This is just gonna get so brutal. Maybe kill off some Outriders. Give some of these Rat Ogres a bit of a... Uh, Remolbered. Leave my storm vermin alone. Alright, who's not doing anything? Let's go. You know what? I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy the show. Is it really a Total War Warhammer game without the gate bug? Honestly, they should leave it in at this point. It's just so much fun to play with. Well, I don't think there's an easier doom stack in the game to get. You just get it by playing. You don't even have to build any buildings. <laughs> you just sit there and it happens. It's pretty crazy, guys. Have each of you target one of the crossbows. Dude, look at the stat line of these units now. It's insane. It's almost mindless at this point. I guess that's pretty fitting for Throat the Unclean and Clan Mulder. But it is almost mindless. Give me a... Uh, give me some warp lightning, huh? Kill the great swords. Don't even have to worry about it. Let's kill us, Lord. point raise that is kind of similar isn't it but you gotta at least set up a the right kind of raised dead which you can cheese yourself but you need the right kind of raised dead pool to make it work this is guaranteed just from playing with vampire accounts you gotta like actively let a lot of zombies die and play one of those battles to 
in a certain way to ensure you get a great raised end pool. But yeah, you're not wrong. The game will summon Blood Knights and Black Coaches and Vargas at turn 30 is also pretty OP. Alright, Kislev. I think you guys are uh, on the back foot at this point. Going downhill for them fast. Almost takes the fun out of it. Almost, yeah. Really great movie, by the way. Maybe not the most historically accurate, but there are some great battle scenes. I remember... Dude, I was like eight years old, and I was I walked in on my dad watching The Patriot. And I remember that scene. I don't remember what battle it is, but it's one where the Continental Army gets pooped on. Like, overrun, because they try to fight the British in a standard line battle, instead of the ambush style, which would ultimately help them win the war. And... Dude gets his head blown off by a cannonball. That scared, that, that scared me. <laughs> I was not ready for that, that young. Also, that tomahawk scene is still brutal to this day. I think my favorite scene in that movie, though, is when he talks about what happens at Fort Wilderness. And, like, the brutality of war. There's no, there's no glorification of it. It's just, this is what war was, this is what war is, and what we did was wrong. And it will haunt me for the rest of my life. Not a nice message, but an important one. Need to fight some open field battles so I get some actual food going again. We got a bunch of ROR's now. Yeah, the money is really not rolling in at the moment. They they nerfed game and economy pretty hard. Uh, was it was it this patch? I know there's like Skaven Warlord or Chieftain, not Chieftain. Uh, I think Warlord shenanigans. I bet there's a trait that kind of makes their economy busted. All right, so Throt is up to level 16. We cannot go to turn 60, so yeah, that's not gonna be a problem. <laughs> um, how long has this been going for, by the way? Trash movie? Mm, mm, wrong. You must be British. You must hate the fact that the Continental Army was just too powerful for the Brits. That America is the best. No, it's, uh... I think it's well-directed. Mel Gibson's a great actor. It's just an enjoyable movie. Like, it's not... It's not historically accurate at all, but... It's got some great scenes. Wow, we've been going for three hours, 40 minutes. That is longer than I would have expected. I'm not sure I want to go much past four simply because... It takes forever for the uh, VOD to show up. What time is it now? 3.40? Yeah, we'll probably end this relatively soon. We'll maybe fight one more battle. If you guys want to stick around for that. Thankfully, the nausea didn't kick in incredibly hard today. I was able to get through it. But yeah, we got plenty more videos coming, too. A lot of fun stuff that you guys are going to enjoy. I think the full embargo drops on Friday. 20, no, 27th, so it would be this weekend. And I will be casting a replay for the Ever Chosen too. So look forward to that. Ever Chosen, I believe, is on Saturday, which will also be a hell of a lot of fun. But no live casting, because CA doesn't love me enough, apparently. I'm not sure. I'm not sure when that will finally happen, but maybe one of these days I will become an actual caster for it. feel like, you know, that's kind of what I do for my YouTube content. Cast battles, my dude. Um, We don't really need a Howling Orb Gale right now, do we? Maybe just start making these guys... I don't really need any of those spells, actually. I guess buffing up my Plague Claw Catapults isn't the worst idea. Elpit is taking forever to level up, despite having a bunch of growth buildings. So, yeah, around turn 50, we'll get it to tier 4. Rackatrack can level up finally, that's good. And probably time to start... Improving this army now. So in terms of ROR's, we have a lot of really good ones, actually. 
Make this just like an ROR stack. And they can start conquering in and of themselves. What did I just do? Um, won't do that yet. Move on Fort Strakhoff and then figure it out. How is Thrani the hottie? Did he just join the stream? Uh, I, I literally think he might have the... He doesn't have the highest end Doom stack potential, but I think he might have the earliest. I mean, there's not really anything AI factions are going to do to you at turn 35 when you have... 15 mutant rat ogres and brood whores. They, they just can't. They, they cannot out DPS all that regen, all that healing. All that death frenzy goodness. Yes, yes, give me some food. And this war is about to end. Yeah, Throt strong. His economic base isn't incredibly impressive from what I've seen so far. Like I said, Skaven have gotten some economic nerfs. Um, but I'm not sure it really matters that much. I mean, this is a relatively... I mean, it's maybe a little bit small of an... You can definitely snowball harder than, than I've done so far. Um, many, many kills today. <laughs> But like in terms of a, a power base here, like this this cuts it. I like the cut of its jib. This will this will work. Now I haven't done anything with the plague priests or plague monks yet. Um, yeah, I think we want to go back to. Hell. Yeah, I like just stabilizing the public order there. But let's do walls. Get growth up a little bit more. Just don't need to invest a whole lot in them yet because I'm only fighting one faction at a time. Which makes it a little bit easier. Or strong weapon. Is that worth? I don't know that that's worth. Now in fear it is definitely worth. And now I think we have enough monsters that it is worth going down the red tree to get towards... Well, let's see. Mutagenic elixirs probably. Yep. Armor, physical resist, leadership. For every single monster in the Molder Flesh Lab. As usual, Yellow Tree kind of gets left behind, which is a little bit sad, but you just don't need a whole lot more than that in campaign. Growth Juice, bonus for- ooh. That's actually- yeah, 50 AP weapon damage. We'll do that first. So for anyone who's actually seen some other streams so far, has there been any- like massive cheese discovered for Molder yet? Besides the obvious of doom stacking by turn 25? Oh, you know what? That's a good point. I haven't even covered the new uh the new map changes. Let's take a look at where Nafarada will make her home in probably less than a year, would be my hope and my guess based on what we know. Give me a second. Let's go income or no, no income. Um, so, yeah, new place in Mortal Empires is should be right up here. Southern Darklands. Yeah, this is the this is the southern part of it. So, this Seepgore, Karak Vlag. That's it right there. I do not see Neferata's home base. I'm imagining Silver Pinnacle is right in here somewhere. Hidden by the fog of war. But yeah, this is literal Darklands territory. This is quite literally a little bit west of where the Chaos Dwarves make their home. So we are expanding eastwards every single time Day gets a chance. First it was Pig Barter and the stuff down where Emmerich and Clan Eshinar and Malice Darkblade. Next it might be Neferata. Like I said, they normally do that about two patch cycles before they start using it. So, Neferata won't be next DLC, but maybe the one after that.
What is my favorite Mulder unit so far? It's Brood Horrors, hands down. No question about it. They're fast, they regen, they have great stats. They look awesome, they have cool animations. There's nothing to not like about them. It's weird though, because on tabletop they had movement speed 8. Which, uh... Would translate in-game to maybe around between 75 to 85 speed. But they have 95 speed, which is more equivalent to movement speed 9 or 10. And now they have 105 because of Throt and the Packmaster, so... That is very interesting. I'm gonna try to fight one big open field battle with this clan molder stack and then i think we'll call it a day uh if there's anything you guys want to see before we end the stream let me know but i'd like to just get one nice little monster mash in before it's all said and done strike fear into the hut the fact that we're not really at war with anyone but kislev is making things pretty easy for me honestly if you want to have an easy start sign naps with norska like they will doubt you if you fight Krakatrak and you don't sign a non-aggression pact. And they will march in and they will take Khazad board Krag. So, it's up to you how hard or easy your start is. But because we signed those NAPs and he didn't do anything, made it pretty damn easy. So, Aaron Grad next and then maybe cut into the heart of the Empire. But, like, no one's doing anything right now, which is weird. Like, AI is kind of being passive at the moment. But it's because I'm not at war with anybody. Like... It's really kind of the crux of it. Let's, uh... Prague is stabilized. We'll recruit some new stuff for him in a second. Do some scouting. Find me a big army. Yeah, maybe fight that stack right there. Even that's gonna be easy, to be honest. Can you see real quick why you chose your name, Milk and Cookie Total War? Yeah, I've told the story a million times, but... I can do so again. No problem. Uh... Started the channel with a guy named Madness back in like 2015, 2014, uh, around when Rome 2 came out. A little bit before that, but like around Shogun 2 actually. And he was my channel partner for a long time. We did Shogun 2 and Rome 2 content together. He got bored of Total War and we jumped into a... Uh, we basically just wanted to have a name that for the channel that was kind of simple and easy and didn't take itself seriously. And milk and cookies are two, two peas in a pod that synergize quite well together. Everyone likes them. Didn't want to have like a try-hard name, you know. Plenty of those in the total work already. So uh, I just said, you know what? Let's uh, no. Let's come up with a silly name that doesn't take itself seriously. Milk and cookies was what we came up with. His name was Madness. Mine's Indie Pride, and will always be Indie Pride. But channel name will remain Milk and Cookies Total War. Cause I like it. Alright, last battle of the stream. Bunch of Mulder dudes about to feast on a bunch of idiot Empire guys. I cannot, guys, seriously, I cannot wait until Kislev becomes a real faction. Like, just think of the glory. Think of the beauty. Think of the wing to Sars riding down the mountainside. The polar bear cavalry ripping and tearing until it is done. Serena Katarin, looking svelte and sexy as always. The Ice Queen that she is. Taking out Baba Yaga and some weird ass chicken monsters. Like, that's gonna be too glorious. I cannot wait. And it'll actually make Clan Mulder campaign. That is one of the coolest things about Mortal Empires. Because when a new faction comes, you don't necessarily need to buy it. It makes everyone else's campaigns more interesting. But yeah, beating up on Empire, Empire Kislevites right now is meh. A little bit lame. The monster blob of doom. One more ride. I think on Legendary, I might have been wrong about this. I think on Legendary, the sisters might end up having a harder campaign than Throt. 
Because this is how you play Legendary already. You can't really get away with that with the sisters right now. Pretty sure we're not shooting the tower, or not shooting the wall, the trees in front of. We're good. I left the brood horror behind, as per usual. Missile resist and regen, LMAO. They have a cannon? No, that's just the towers. Chat, let me know what you guys think about Doomstacks. Are you guys on board? Do you use them a lot? Do you prefer to play normally? Just bring like balanced armies? This one kind of happened organically and naturally. I didn't recruit these units. They just fell into my lap. I think they can be a nice change of pace. Like the Minotaur Doom stack I did with uh, with Torox the Brass Bull was super entertaining. But I don't know if that's like, stop shooting them. I don't think I would say it's my traditional play style, what I prefer. Patrick Gardner with the 10. Early happy Thanksgiving to you, Andy. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well, my friend. Thank you. Fortune favors the infamous. Maybe we get a remolder going here. And we now have two Rat Ogre summons, which is so unbelievably busted. Yeah, let's give him some health back. Just remolder our pinky. We don't want to lose him on stream in the last game of the day. That would make me sad. Game plan tomorrow is another multiplayer battle. So I'll have one of those ready for you guys. Showing off some new units. I don't know what that matchup will be yet. Depends what kind of replays I can get. But if you guys have any preferences or want to see something unique, let me know and I can see if I can oblige. I don't have anything recorded for it yet. I do need to record a ever chosen replay for Creative Assembly. So that's next on the agenda. But other than that, one video tomorrow and probably some more streams by the weekend. Lots of stuff to show off. Pretty dope DLC so far. Not the best they've ever done, I don't think. But it's pretty damn good. All right, my mutant rat ogre is getting absolutely pooped on by that lord, so let's fix that. Did the help and abomination even come in? No, they had some issues. Stop calling me. It's gonna be some dumbass saying that my car's extended warranty has expired. Like, stop it. <laughs> no, it hasn't. You're a liar and a deceiver. And you smell like rotten eggs. Maybe we won't pull them back in there. Honestly, spam calls like that should be highly illegal. Imagine if that was happening to a, to someone who was like, trying to, like, for example, uh, someone needs to call a 911 and all the lines on some, on a, like a hospital's phone lines are shut down because of some idiot spamming them with calls about their car's extended warranty being expired. Like someone could effing die from that. That shit is not okay. Like I could miss a call from my sister saying that like, her husband's had a heart attack because of that bullcrap. It's really bad. It should be like hyper, hyper, hyper illegal. Definitely give you some remoldered. Got a few more close ups to end it, baby.
Usually get calls from a Chinese lady telling me the government's going to steal my money. Yeah. Sounds about right. I'm going to avoid doing an impression for that. I've gotten that call as well, but... <laughs> probably not the best idea to try that on stream. Plane claws are not good at hitting the stuff on the walls. And frankly, I'm not even sure I need them because I just go through the gate anyway with the monster mash, but... All right, daddy, kill some great swords. That little face rub they do is so adorable. No gorge today, unfortunately. I'm sorry about that. I just didn't have the quest line pop. I don't know why. Might be later on. Or maybe when you level up help it to tier 4 or something. I'm not sure what the requirements for that are. Go kill some halberds and finish this baby up. I will definitely be showing Gorachov in a replay for you guys viewing entertainment. All right, so I think that went decently well. I think that gives you guys a pretty good indication of what's up with Clan Mulder and how he plays. Uh, if anyone's actually interested in me continuing this playthrough, I, I can think about that, but I think the next stream might be Sisters instead. Certainly, uh, I have a turn 85 campaign with them where I have a bunch of these settlements across the world, and I think that will be more dynamic because you can teleport to different locations, fight a bunch of different enemies, rather than be kind of nestled in my little corner of the map. So from that standpoint, I think Sisters' campaign is more fun just because you have a lot more flexibility, can fight on a lot more continents, fight a lot more enemies, and of course, there's a lot of cool stuff there. Unfortunately, in that playthrough, mine had a bug where the quest line for Seth and Har never popped, so I'm stuck on Gwyndalore the Great Eagle, which means they are nowhere near as powerful as they could be, because Great Eagles suck in melee. And forest dragons are amazing. So that's unfortunate, but it hasn't really impacted it too much. Um, yeah, our economy's on fleek. We're gonna get a second stack here in a second. That's really strong as well. Bunch of monsters. And from there, try to start the snowball. So, I am going to call it. If you guys have any questions or concerns, leave them in chat and I'll see if I can answer them before we end this one. I will again make sure we did not miss any donations. And, uh, that is indeed Clan Molder. If it looks like something that might be appealing for you guys, let me know. It's fun. I mean, it's fun, but I, I, I think a doom stack like this one, it, it takes a little bit out of the game in terms of like being stretched on your micro and having to try. <laughs> but again, it kind of fell into our lap. It wasn't what I planned to do when we started, but it's very thematic, very fitting, and it's working like crazy. Super good. Hell Pit Landmark. I have shown it, but I'll show it one more time if you want to see it. Uh, do do Big scare, scare for enemy things. Yeah, we can put that level two. Eating thing now. I'm all back to time. Going cat, I'm going to take Aaron Grad. Yeah, this is we're looking really strong right now. All right, so tier three. Right now, landmark, food, public order, growth, juice, upkeep, recruitment cost, recruit rank, and then tier five. A lot better. But we won't be able to get that for quite a long time. Multiplayer battles tomorrow. I'm going to call it here. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream. And have a wonderful Thanksgiving if you celebrate. If not, you must not be American, which means you're obviously not the master race. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Eddie Pride signing out for now. Have a good one.